Trexploration. And welcome to, I think I have it this time, Trexploration. Is that right? Trexploration. Yes, you did it. Trexploration. You did it. You did it. You did it in a minute. I did it. To you quote have the, the, the poets, Hall and Oates. <laughs> I like Garfunkel <laughs> and Oates. Those are my favorite. Have you heard them? I have, yes. That's uh, Katie Micucci. Yep. Got to love Micucci. Um, so, uh, yeah, you were saying uh, before we started, you got your Quantum Leap background going on. So you got to switch back and forth, right? Yeah, uh, I have the one background because the way my library is set up, it's a kind of a disaster area right now, which you saw when you came to visit me. Right. It was uh, nice. Though. A few weeks ago. And uh, I have to get it redone. But this is the one corner I felt like I could make up into a somewhat decent background for our studio because you forced me, you've dragooned me into becoming like a YouTube sensation instead of just a normal podcaster that can go do it in a closet somewhere um uh, you can still we, go do it in a closet somewhere but not record the podcast <laughs> you got some nice closets at you, your place other people I mean, you, call them you bedrooms. really yeah well you know what when when you, so how how deep do you want to get into this i mean that was supposed Very to be deep. the baby's room but that baby that baby never came so what are we gonna do <sighs> keep it as a shrine to a baby that never came no, we're going to uh, turn it into a nice big walk-in dressing room for the wife. She works hard. She deserves it. Exactly. Laura's an amazing person and real, by the way. Real. Yeah, and real. Found mm-hmm. out. Rebecca's not. But she never showed. But uh, We had to um, do a Quantum Leap pod mm-hmm. yesterday. Uh, On First Contact they Day. Been, yeah, they had just announced the cancellation <laughs> of the quantum leap revival so i took down all of my star trek stuff that you saw during the last show and put back my old quantum leap swag which is there and um i completely forgot that it was behind me when we sat down to record so everybody gets to look upon the quantum leap said here let me see if i can uh, oh here we have the defiant let's put the defiant here all the right defiant and the hand link what do you think? i will defiantly wear this shirt I got a Wubba Lubba Dub shirt going on. Wubba Dub Dub, Rick? Uh, Rick and Morty. And I just broke my Defiant. (laughs) (laughs) That's got to hurt. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. Super glue? Maybe. I don't know. You know what fixes anything? It's this new thing called eBay. Bubble gum. Bubble gum. See, this is me getting fancy trying to make... The most choice! I got the reference. The most toys, right? Sure. I uh, This is a dead toy. Now I have to see if I can find another one of these. I don't think I'll be able to. All you got to do is put that towards the back. It's battle damage. So put it next to a board oh, cube, uh, like in first contact. <laughs> right? Oops. Did I say that out loud? Well, fudge. I don't know. I didn't hear it. All right. Let's see if we can put this back together. This is the kind of stuff that everybody tunes into Trexploration to see. Chris breaking his little toys. <laughs> uh, I, you broke you broke your little ships. Uh-huh, exactly. Thank you. First contact I, again, right? I fixed yeah. it. I fixed First my little contact. ship. You broke your little Still ships. A little wonky. Lily, so, Lily says that in first contact. Yes. Uh, yes. Don't look at this too closely. Luckily, it's the yeah. internet. We're only in 4K. There we go. So now Frazier is flying to define. We'll call him Captain. Uh, what was his? What was Frazier's captain name? Oh, now you're uh, putting me on the spot. I have the book. Yeah, Morgan. Even. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> they said they would look it up. They never did. <laughs> That's my they Morgan Freeman. Did. So we didn't have a great Bateman, first contact. Morgan day. Bateman. Is it, it? Was Morgan Batesman. Okay. Did you yeah. read the book? I never read the book. I started to read the book, but I didn't finish it. I, I sort of wanted to. Um, what I loved about that is that Kelsey was such a huge Frasier fan, a Frasier fan too, but such a huge Trek fan. They were shooting on the same lot, basically, and the Star Trek set was right across the street or right across the lot. So they got him into the Monster Maroon, and originally Kiersey was going to come with him and stand in the back and be Savick. Uh, wow. But they decided that that just wouldn't fit in with the timeline. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't, they couldn't figure out how to make it work. So right. it did, that was kind of a missed opportunity, but anyway, uh, that's my Frasier and Star Trek fandom colliding. <laughs> What's the book name? Ship of the line. Is it or something like I that? I think so. Yeah. 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 
yeah, I have the hardcover. Uh, somebody was reading it online and I read along with them, but like, you know, time get distracted and stuff. So our first contact day wasn't the best. We found out that our other show that we like quantum leap got canceled. So we had to deal with that a little bit of uh, my new place that I live in the space station got into that. So I think I'm just going to keep that background um, all the time. Okay. Since I can't really make the space station look like. Party all the time, anymore. party all the time, party all the party time. time. Eddie Murphy, right? I think so. Yeah. Originally going to be my... in Star Trek four. I got it right. Yeah. So it, it always he was going to be Catherine Hicks, I think. Yep. He was going okay. to be a scientist that was about pollution or something like that. I don't even. Oh, he wasn't, wasn't going to be a, a well scientist. Uh, cetacean scientist. I don't think so. Okay. But uh, so, so we are we are in an alternate timeline where Tom Hanks wasn't Zephyrin Cochran and uh, Catherine Hicks replaced Eddie Murphy, and you didn't have a kid, so you have huge closets. So, but your, your, your dark, dark timeline is very sad, but for all of us, it's, it worked out because we get to talk about Star Trek every night. <laughs> I'm in my dark timeline. <laughs> I think, a lot, a well, I think all of us are, aren't we? If you think about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it, well. it, it works out. You find, you find your niche anyway. So uh, what episode are we talking about this time before we get to uh, all our announcements? Uh, we got to let people know what we're talking about. We are talking about season one, episode three, The Naked Now. The Naked Now, or like I uh, like the next I generation. Say, next generation, like I call it, the uh, drunk horny episode. So I like that. Yeah. Um, okay. But before that, we got some announcements. I think we got some new patrons, don't we? New patrons? I do. We have a couple. All got right, you got the show sheet ahead of you. I'm still moving I do, in, I do, so I, I still do. got only you on the screen. So we are welcoming aboard uh, six new patrons. Uh, they are free new patrons. Thank you so much for subscribing, you six new Thank free you. patrons. But we also got two paying members at the $17.01 level. That's so two total. One, two total new patrons that are paying at the L Lieutenant Commander 1701 level. Uh, the first is one of all. Is that a Borg reference? What is that? That is a Borg reference. Ah, uh, from the guy who doesn't watch Voyager. You should have read these. You wouldn't. <laughs> uh, no, and, I think uh, it's one. Uh, it's one that they made up. Uh, I found that out in communicating with them. Uh, it's one they made up. Ah, because gotcha. uh, it was going to okay. be one of however many patrons we had, but it kept changing. So they decided one of all. I see. I see. So, mm -hmm. thank you, one of all, for supporting us at the seventeen dollar and one set. Uh, it's one cent, not one set, one cent. So they are lieutenant uh, commander. Lieutenant commander level. Yeah. And we have another lieutenant commander on board. Uh, welcome, fantasy fan, to the Patreon uh, family. Thank you, fantasy welcome fan, aboard. for supporting us again at the lieutenant commander level at $17 and one cent. You can become a lieutenant commander if you go to patreon.com slash trexploration. Uh, what are the uh, other levels? People don't have to be lieutenant commanders, do they? Which is awesome, by the way. It's no, I have to. Somebody. I have to call up the Patreon. I, this is all new to me, so uh, let's see. Let's we're learning as we go. My page, they changed all of the Patreon, so I have to see like actually how it works. Uh, creator, member. Let's see. You're gonna have to cut this. Nope. Nope. Creator, where do you find the levels? <laughs> um, <laughs> membership, maybe. There you go. We're about. Let's try that. Okay, yes. We, we have about. a $5 cadet level, and we have a $17.01 lieutenant commander level. That's our highlighted later. tier, and we have three members there. We have the $47 a month captain level. If you want to become a captain, you can do so for $47 a month. Mm -hmm. See, 47 is a Star Trek reference. Um, you can do the Voyager tier at $84.72 a month. That's uh, 8472, species, species 8472. 8472, 8472 in the hizzy. And then we have the Bad Merle level at $1,000 a month, which Don't again, do that at all. Is yeah, it's insane. Yeah, um, do we we say don't do that. So uh, uh, you can find all of the good stuff that comes with those levels if you go to Trexploration uh, Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Trexploration. I promise you we'll get better at this. We're still kind of working this out. So yeah, we do have fancy go. new artwork there, though. So it's it called evolution. Amazing. We're going to evolve. We're going to have it all in our heads pretty soon. 
Yes, yes. Soon this will become second nature for all of us. So, so. we have three lieutenant commanders now in our crew. We have Cosplay yeah. Dad, One of All, and Fantasy Fan. Yes, so thank you to all three of you uh, lieutenant commanders. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Let's see what we got going. And yeah, so naked now, huh? Naked now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the you want to do the feedback later and the polls later or you want to do polls now and feedback later I, listen the, yeah, you are the producer you tell me what you want to do and we'll do it all right well uh my thought is uh since uh we're kind of going in order let's talk about the feedback we got for um encounter at far point if any okay sure uh i do believe that we got one letter and it was from let's see we got a letter in the post office box. <laughs> no, I saw an email. That's what I meant. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Uh, so it looks like you put some feedback on here. I hadn't seen this one. It's regarding our first episode of mm -hmm. Encounter at Farpoint. And it's from Brent Jap, who we Ooh. heard from last time. Brent Thank writes, you. good show. I'm considering the $1,000 tier. LOL. No. <laughs> do not. Do not do that. L O L Brent. There's an obviously. L -L. Yeah. And um, we also got some feedback on the Patreon site from Tom from Cosplay Dad. And, you know, I meant to bring this up when we were talking about Encounter Farpoint, but I guess, you know, the, the conversation kind of got away from, from me. Um, he wrote, I was kind of waiting for the comparison of Riker slash Troy to Decker slash Aaliyah as a storyline rumored to have been written for Star Trek Phase 2, moved to Star Trek, the motion picture, and then on to TNG Encounter Farpoint. Uh, is okay, but I think it suffers. I guess he means the really relationship is okay um but i think it suffers from all the introductions okay never mind tng so he's saying encounter at far point is okay but i think it suffers from all the introductions and groundwork being laid out mm. i don't know if i agree with that Tom. i kind of liked the groundwork and the introductions i think that was really the meat of the episode and what we needed. I think that the adventure of the week, whatever it may be, you know, that's, I guess you have to have that with Star Trek. It's always that mm -hmm. balance between character and, and mission. Right. And I think that the mission was a lot less interesting than laying that groundwork and in the interpersonal dynamics that we saw. So what did you think, Al? I, I meant to talk about the Ilea and Decker thing and, and, um, mm -hmm. Deanna and Riker, but I think our conversation just took a left turn while I had that in yeah. my brain and we never got back to it. But yeah, uh, it was like a direct lift from Star Trek phase two, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Persis Kimbata was in phase two. She was cast mm -hmm. in that uh, they had some, some, I guess it was uh, costume tests or what do they call that? When, when you do the, uh, the screen, the screen testing with screen the costumes test, yeah. And they had Shatner and her in the phase two costumes, which were, you know, bloody awful. They just looked like kind of, kind of updated sort of TOS tunics. So it wasn't very dynamic. It still looked pretty cheap, but the one thing that I remember so vividly, because I didn't realize this, but Persis Kambata had this beautiful head of hair. Like she was just this glamorous, gorgeous model. And yeah. at the last minute they told her that she had to shave it. <laughs> I don't know if that's apocrypha or not, but I read that somewhere at some point. I've had so, many dates like that where at the last minute I had to say that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's uh, good. The, all, these, all these girls are in Canada. So, yep. No, yeah. I've, I've had real life girlfriends and dates and stuff. <laughs> uh, not quite 47 of them, though. But uh, this is what we're talking about. Star Trek, the motion picture, if you haven't seen it. This is a special longer version. Not better version or special version, just longer. It's longer. I think that that, that longer one might have been the one that they showed on ABC when they did uh, like the TV movie, right? The TV movie. Uh, yeah, movie. it includes clips from the TV version. Right, right. So they had they, they used to have like separate cuts for that. I guess maybe it was to entice you to watch. But there's uh, uh, Ilya. If, if you had seen the film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is kind so of what I'm our sure new artwork is like, kind of trying to go for, right? That, yeah, that I wanted, I wanted to get that, that sort of that, 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 that cascading rainbow effect. I mm -hmm. love it. So, oh, who's, um, who's doing our artwork? We got to thank them. We have to thank Scott Madison for doing our Scott artwork. Madison. Uh, thank Scott, you, Scott. Scott's our old, our old standby when it comes to doing 
things like graphics because he's a graphic artist and he did our quantum leap podcast logo. Uh, he's done a number of things for me personally. And, uh, like he's helped me design t-shirts and, and mm. different things that I've given as gifts to the people in the pod, like the QLP crew and, uh, even swag that we designed for the cast and crew of mm. quantum leap when we were trying to woo them onto the show when uh, the new quantum leap premiered a couple of years ago so scott always does excellent work and alby if you can maybe just pop in the logo that he made of us as tas characters Will i do. loved 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 that it was just uh amazing we had sort of an idea and we went through maybe two or three iterations and then he just nailed it and yep i yeah, I, I I might ask him like to swap out the uniforms every once in a while, but I like being in in my archer my archer captain uh, enterprise jumpsuit, and uh, you have, I guess that's that's first contact era. Yeah, I'm I think yeah. I'm first contact in your enterprise, so that's cool. Yeah, again, it didn't even occur to me to ask for the monster maroon. I should get the monster maroon. Oh, could you imagine? Right, I did ask him to make it smell like bananas though. <laughs> It smells like bananas and shame. <laughs> That's from my old uh, website design days. Uh, like all the requests I would get for the websites, it, they'd be just as logical as, could you make it smell like bananas? Just like things you couldn't do. <laughs> so I felt I felt, felt like we were getting there with them. We were like, can you make the rainbow a little bit more, you know, like, like warp rainbow fieldy? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Scott. And rainbow, Scott will be in the credits. We'll be updating all our... Um, photos and stuff for a while until we get everything yeah. nailed in right but i think it was um your idea to sort of do us as tas you wanted an animated thing you were mm -hmm. thinking more like a jay and jay and silent bob some, some yeah of the, i was thinking clerks. Clerks cartoon thing with the thick lines but i think the i was like oh yeah tas they made star trek cartoons so that makes more sense right they do yeah, yeah. so I, I felt weird asking him i was like could you make my stomach a little bigger because i'm you know a little bigger in real life <laughs> And I was like, this is my time to either uh, get healthy and get thin or just have the cartoon be made fatter. So I, I went with the second one. Well, if, if you guys look at that, that, that rendering of me, he captures my five head. I think I got a six head now. He captures it beautifully. <laughs> so, and even my graying, my graying sides, my Hal Jordan graying locks. He does that pretty well, too. So good work, mm -hmm. Scott Madison. I always like to say when we're talking about things on the QLP, uh, if we have an idea for a graphic, I say, get on that, Scott Madison. And uh, I think I'll <laughs> keep doing that for this show. So you can see the results. They're always yeah. good. So uh, Scott, his outfit is called Planet Rise Creative. That's his graphic design company. And you can see his work at planetrisecreative.com. So oh, cool. go check Actually, all hopefully that we'll out. get him to design us some merch yeah. for this show. That'd be great. Yeah, he's available for commissions. And um, as you can see, he can pretty much do anything you need when it comes to your graphic design needs. So planetrisecreative.com. Thanks, Thank, Scott. Thank you, Scott. I think we had a poll for Encounter Farpoint, and then the rest of it will be moving Yeah, this is all, I mean, stuff. I looked at this poll about three seconds ago, so I, okay, I need cool. you to take lead on this poll. What, what are these well, polls? Because I don't know, I'm, I'm not even sure how this is supposed to work. It, it, We're it asking our included. viewers, our listeners, to vote on what they thought out of five, because we gave our out of five ratings for Encounter of Point. But we want to know what uh, what the listeners think, what, what our uh, crew thinks. So what, what did they say? Thinks. So uh, what, was, what was the vote on Encounter of Point? One to five. Hang on. I got to go back to the uh, to the page. I got to go back to the page. See, you didn't put this on the rundown. We're going to work this out. I promise yeah, everybody. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. This is part okay. of the fun learning. All right. So let me go back to the page with the thing. Ah, there it is. The page with the thing. Page with Let's the thing. Let's go to community. <laughs> nope, that's We're not it. learning internet. <laughs> Let's go to home. There we go. So for Encounter at Farpoint, how would you rate Encounter at Farpoint? It looks like... What are the choices? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, or higher, or on your feet, criminal. On your so feet, criminal? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, this, the soldier uh, gets tries to get him to stand up by oh. shoot, shooting the machine gun in the air. Yes, gotcha. And he's gotcha, wearing the gotcha, non-bulletproof bulletproof vests. 
and he's sniffing his he's sniffing his nose sniffing his and, uh tetracell white lapel yeah exactly he's he's yeah. like a gem gem hador gem hador um the, the makeup so, is yeah, different so, for that one. Oh, it looks like we have a tie here oh um okay. we have 40 percent gave it three stars 40 percent gave it four stars and 20 percent gave it five stars there's only five votes total so okay. you know we guess two two and one uh, i didn't vote yet i'm gonna give it three stars well i don't think we should there. vote because when we influence oh, the yeah th all right yeah we're the bridge <laughs> crew uh the people who vote on that is the actual crew Wait, the lower deckers can vote and we can't? I well, we get to vote a week ahead of time. <laughs> so I think that it's it's pretty solid middling, middling to yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of what we said about it too. Yeah, and I think that's a lot to do with most of us uh have seen the whole series. So we know there's much better stuff out there. If if we were just watching it fresh, it we might have got higher higher ratings. I don't know. Speaking Maybe. of more shows, we're talking about this time. We're talking about the Naked Now. So, uh, can you, uh, Christopher? Can you give us the air date, uh, star date, and a brief uh, episode synopsis? I'm so glad you wrote all this stuff down. Okay, the original air date for the Naked Now was October fifth, nineteen eighty-seven, wow. and uh, no, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong uh, one. You wrote that the writer was DC Fontana. The writer is not DC Fontana. Oh, who's the writer? According I just went by Wikipedia. Google's AI, so maybe that's wrong. According to Wikipedia, The Naked okay, Now, let's do that. Uh, story by John D. F. Black and J. Michael Bingham, teleplay by J. Michael Bingham, directed by Paul Lynch. I don't no. know that anybody needs to know that, but there you go. And um, now, see, that's something we should we should discuss. I've never really understood the efficacy of saying who wrote and directed and are we going to do a trivia section or like i don't know i don't know like uh, i know like on I'm, well I'm with star saying, trek like, i think it's a P. special deal because usually a lot of episodic television you see one or two names maybe but like when you get into the later seasons of next gen and i think uh, enterprise was crazy with it too and voyager you, you, it, there's times where there's like 12 people on screen you know who wrote I know, it and so and it just story. really becomes it becomes kind of tedious to read them. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should do it. We should do a poll. Do you want us to read the the hey, writers a new and poll. The directors every episode? There's the new poll. So, so who directed it? I don't know. Uh, it was. I can't make my way because I'm on the wrong rundown. See, this is. I'm sorry, everybody. It was directed by Paul Lynch. Paul Lynch. Okay. Uh, I wonder if uh, they're a um, relative of Jane Lynch. Not sure. Maybe, maybe Merrill maybe. Lynch or Ensign Lynch. Yeah. Like you did for Ensign Lynch. <laughs> that's my, that's my Alfre Woodard impersonation. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, I wonder if that was an homage. Maybe all those years later. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Take um, that Paul Lynch. So what's uh, the episode description if be somebody be hasn't watched it in a while? Okay, so I read this. Uh, I wrote this. So, uh, <laughs> coming to the aid of science vessel USS. It's not the Tchaikovsky, was it? Tchaikovsky. It was. It was so hard. They. I don't think they were saying Tchaikovsky. They were saying Sielowski. Sielkowski. I think. Sil Sil Silkowski. Silkowski. Coming to the aid of a science vessel insert name here, studying a collapsing star, the crew of the Enterprise is infected with a mysterious pathogen that lowers inhibitions and sparks a deadly race against time to find the cure and save the ship from certain destruction. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun, dun. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? The Naked Now. Yeah. Even the title of this episode it, doesn't it make sense. Are we going another time? Versions? What are we doing? <laughs> it reminds me of another time, maybe. Like, maybe another Naked Time. Like the naked yes. time. <laughs> I wow. Um, yeah, first listen. impressions, Chris. Let's go for it. Yeah, drive the bus. Drive the bus here. Uh, quite frankly, I don't understand why this episode exists. If you're going to go through the trouble of staking out a brand new Star Trek and introducing a whole new crew and a whole new dynamic, the second episode out of the gate is going to be a 
blatant retread of one of the more minor episodes of the original series. I mean, The Naked Time is a pretty good episode. There are some fun moments, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't call it an all timer. Maybe maybe some people would disagree with me, but I think it's just a solid episode of TOS. If you're going to sort of stake your claim for a new generation, this is the one that you're going to just rip off and reference back to the old show with. I just don't understand why this episode exists. How about you? Uh, I'll disagree with you a little bit. Um, first of all, Naked Time, I like it. It's fun. But uh, it's a um, when I first think of that, I think of uh, Naked Sulu or Topless Sulu with a sword, drunk, mm -hmm. uh, just swashbuckling around the Enterprise. Um, I think... There was a couple reasons why they made this. Um, I believe uh, if you if you look at this episode and the Naked Time, they're earlier on in the runs of Star Trek, and it really helps you understand the character better because uh, all their inhibitions are down. So it kind of right. is an excuse, like a, a writing a tool to let you in on their inner people, their inner secrets, who they really are when they're not being all prim and proper. Okay. So you tell me, though, is this a second episode? No. You really need to establish these characters and who they are when they're being prim and proper before you go mm -hmm. to the trope of breaking down all of those inhibitions and making them play against type, so to speak. And that was another reason why I just found the timing of this episode so suspicious. And that's why, if you recall, if I asked you um, last week mm -hmm. when we were doing Encounter Farpoint, if there is in this first season production order versus airing order issues like there was in the original series, because this strikes me as like an episode six or seven, because you need to get to know these characters first before you start changing it up like this. And I thought maybe this was one of a, a like a later episode that got put, put first because of, because of reasons, but you're telling me, no, this was always supposed to be episode three. It's even production code one Oh three. So mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I I agree with you. It should have been later on in the run because you don't know that they're against type because you don't know their type really yet, except for the first uh, movie encounter at Farpoint. So you yeah, got a good so point there. I, I wonder if this one works better in retrospect because we've gotten to know the characters over the last 35 years. So we can't help but juxtapose what we know and how they are to what we're seeing here. And I guess... In hindsight, that makes it a lot more fun if you don't really care about being in universe at the time that it was first being aired. But if we're going to just rate it on its merits as the second episode of a premiere series, it just seems odd to me. It seems like just the weirdest choice. Do you have any background on why they made this decision. I know that and I asked this because I know that you do a lot of like uh, extras and behind the <laughs> yeah. scenes stuff. And usually I just watch the episodes. I talk about the episodes and then I'm done with it. I don't usually delve into that stuff. I've watched a couple of documentaries about Star Trek, Chaos on the Bridge being one of them. It's the only thing I've really watched though about like the, mm -hmm. the background of Next Gen and how it all came together. So I, I feel like you're much more knowledgeable than me on these types of points. I am a bonus features kind of guy. So yeah. Um, yeah. The, from my understanding, uh, my first go-to thing is Gene Roddenberry always wanted to do an episode about someone having sex with a robot. <laughs> so that's where this came from. I mean, if that is the truth, I mean, it, it, it is as good a reason as any, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but here's where I think that this episode, aside from the timing, if you're going to do an homage to Naked Time, the Naked Time wasn't about them all getting intoxicated. The Naked Time was this virus breaking down their inhibitions and making them not drunk, but vulnerable, mm -hmm. making them all embrace uh, or be be consumed by their deep, their deepest inner fears. Mm -hmm. And the Sulu bit was an exception uh, because he was just having fun. But I mean, we get the culmination of this episode is like Spock's crying because he could never tell his mother that he loved her. Mm -hmm. Kirk is like 
so consumed with his need to be on the enterprise that he, he, he hates it. He's like, never lose you, you know? And it's like, but he realizes the sacrifice that it takes to be the captain. Um, you know, Riley, the Riley, Riley West thing. Yep. Yeah. One more time, you know? Um, that, 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 you know, that, that they, was a huge parallel. Have, but they did have some fun hmm. um, with the Riley and with the Sulu, but then it, you know, stuff got real as well. And I feel like it never really gets real in this episode. They just fall back on everybody's drunk and horny and, and horny. That's yeah. why I'm going to give this episode more of a pass than you are. Cause I was 12 <laughs> and I don't know if you remember being a 12 year old boy, but I was horny all the time. So when I saw this episode, this is the first time in my entire life that I saw under boob. Oh, really? Yes. Now, I thought that it was that it was especially, especially incredible that and and polite, really courteous if you for all of the dead orgy goers to have their hands artfully and, <laughs> you know, stylishly draped across all of their boobs, you know, mm-hmm. so that there was no nipples on TV. You did see some butt, though, and I don't know if that's now just evident butt. from the. Yeah, I think some some guy butt was uh was yeah maybe some uh, lower HC sack or maybe some taint. I don't know if we're allowed to say those things, <laughs> but uh, I don't think they ever envisioned it being like on Blu-ray and 1080p with 4K right. scans on a 135 inch screen. But I was like, I think I see things I'm not supposed to see. Yeah, yeah, maybe but if yeah if all their inhibitions were down so much so that they were like, yeah, do it, do it, blow us out into space. Are they yeah. really going to be covering up their nipples? I don't know. I'm, We're wearing cloths. No, that's, that's you know. I think that you know the first thing that we see is that Jordy is hot, right? When he gets mm-hmm. infected, so that's ah. why maybe they want to cool everything down and they find that frozen room. I never connected and, that. You know, but here's one thing. Okay, I will give them this. If this mm-hmm. is a pathogen, a virus that somehow mm-hmm. spreads through touch and through fluids <laughs> then it, it actually it, it works it works for the virus it works in the virus's favor to make everybody horny because it wants everybody to exchange fluids so yeah. same as making you cough and sense. sneeze yeah right? it makes sense to me you know it makes sense so uh yeah so the the towels kind of make sense too because maybe that was after they're horny and i remember you know, afterwards, you not, might need a towel to clean up a little bit. So I'm thinking in universe, it all works out. But yeah, I but remember as a like- kid watching that episode and rewinding it and pausing it in that area because I just I was hoping to see a boob, you know, um, <laughs> you know your VHS cool. tape was like it was it was creased yeah. in that spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't doing good. Uh, but I, you couldn't, you couldn't, but I had no the best possible version tracking, at the time. Right? <laughs> I had the collector's edition, right? What what made that the best possible? Well, it was a first generation of what the TV show a- aired. So this I is uh, Naked uh, Naked Now and Code of Honor came out. Um, I, I, ooh, I have the other one uh, back on my shelf also, the uh, single episode. But uh, when I paused it, it was a home recording of the VHS of the episode. And I didn't see back then, you couldn't really see the claws as much as you just saw like frozen people. So I think uh, we're judging it with the 1080p Blu-ray versus yeah. uh, what originally aired. You said you couldn't see. Did you say claws? Claws like towels? Oh, cloths. Yeah, no. Some people had claws. That was another episode where they all turn into right. like cavemen and monkeys and <laughs> spiders. Say, wait and, a minute. I think I think lizards. I missed something. <laughs> It's like, Arr. it's like, yeah. it's but, the, the but disease, for the time, Arr. I think this was 87 on television. It wasn't network, but it was uh, on free over the air television. So at, for the time, that was pretty naked. Yeah. I, hey, look, I mean, it's as much nudity as I've ever seen on Star Trek outside of an errant Klingon nipple on Discovery. Yeah. So I think that um, it really does mark a milestone for uh, unless you want to cal- count um bill thesis costumes from the original series those looked like they were going to fall off any given second so that was my uh klingon opera tribute band errant uh klingon nipple <laughs> yeah it never really took off no huh? um, no but uh so 
<sighs> Did you do the areola aria? <laughs> I wanted to. The other of. band members didn't want me to. They they thought it was too on too cliche, too on the nose. They wanted to be more esoteric. It was a it was a long discussion. It never worked out. They weren't my friends. They were just people that you know all knew Klingon. Would you and, would you call them then, would you call them divas? Mm, I think I was the diva. That's an op- cause, opportunity. Yeah, probably an opportunity. out of all of them, I, I yeah. took the most time in front of the mirror. Um, but yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm just if you if I look like I'm looking down and off camera, I'm just sort of going through my notes right now. I wrote them last night, so uh, I have some notes. Yeah, also. I just want to make sure I you know yeah I don't miss because all this notes. is gold. It's all gold here, Jerry. So so this this episode I watched a lot as a kid because of the underboob and just uh, the sexiness of it. And there was a, a lot of lot of horny things going on. Let's see. Uh, Tasha was horny. Uh, yep. Beverly was horny. Uh, Beverly was Deanna horny. was horny. So this was kind of yeah. like Spanish fly disease or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. It was it was something else. I mean, if you want to get into those those interrelationships, the only one that didn't seem affected was uh, two well two people. Worf did not have any kind of reaction at all. Maybe because nobody touched them, or maybe his Klingon <laughs> physiology, but. I'm surprised that they didn't – why didn't they use that as a mm. plot point to have him help? And also you can highlight the Klingon. This is the most interesting character on the ship. If you were a, a, a Star Trek – legacy Star Trek fan at the time watching this episode, you have this Klingon on the bridge that you've barely scratched the surface with. And he just seems to be giving one-liners about this whole thing, completely unaffected by the disease that's destroying the entire ship. What? I mean, but let's send Data, who's obviously, you know, <laughs> somehow compromised by this, you know, if you prick me, do I not leak? Leak. <laughs> I know uh, Worf was a late addition, so they might have had the script written before Worf was added, because uh, uh, Michael Dorn was the last to join the cast. Like, they just stuck him up on the bridge in Encounter at Farpoint. So, oh, okay. Uh, we don't we don't get more wharf scenes i think until halfway through this season so this is why it goes again like when they said they had a year to write all the scripts and they didn't do anything <laughs> until the very last minute so i think that's a lot like, of us you know, right just like a lot of people working on term papers or show notes for a youtube channel um <laughs> yeah i <laughs> i think that uh you know that that could have been an interesting thing i liked the fact that the first one to sort of go horny. Oh, and I didn't finish my thought before. The other person that didn't seem to be very affected was Riker. But I'm assuming that's because he gets laid like four times a day. Right. He just just got out of holodeck three. So he wasn't horny at all. And he has no more fluids to give. So he's just got to drink some juice and and recoup, you know? The the lower deckers are uh, cleaning that up. But yeah, I was thinking Riker had like an amazing immune system because he he was affected. He was touched, but he was like the last to actually catch it. And he still never got horny. He just got the sweats. Um, But I think that was because, you know, like when uh, Deanna was all over him, he was probably like, where were you this morning before Holodeck 3? You know? And she calls him Bill, which is weird. I think only oh, that happens one other time, right? Deanna I don't calls recall William her calling Riker Bill in this one. Yeah, he, she calls him Bill in the one when uh, it's like two or three episodes from now. Oh, it's yeah. another dude comes on. Uh, I don't know if he's Betazoid or I remember it because. Oh, that yeah, that, that episode as Bill, well. So I don't, uh, Haven. Yeah. Haven? Okay. No. We'll get to it. No, that sounds like a Voyager episode. V- Fair Haven. No. Um. Yeah, yeah, it, I know the one you're talking about, the marriage one. I, yeah, yeah, I guess. I want to so, say yeah. it's Haven because the other crew is like infected okay. and they're looking for a place to be safe. I want to say it's Haven. I'm saying, I'm saying yes. But yeah, I, it's in both. I think because uh, she call definitely calls him Bill in this one in engineering when she's drunk and hitting on him. So okay, and I, uh, I really didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Let's uh, let's rewind it and see. Let's go to the videotape. Right. Comment down below. Comment down below. Yeah. Um, But I mean, they, they kind of crossed that. Like, so they were having fun with Mm -hmm. the whole sexy thing. But then when Troy gets infected, it seems like it's hurting her. It seems like she's, she's so horny. It's painful or something. I don't know. Like, 
they they wrote it so much differently for her because you could tell that uh yor was having a ball mm-hmm. you can tell uh, maybe maybe a few you can tell <laughs> that beverly and jean luc were um really feeling it and they seem to be having some fun i have so much to say about patrick and gates and oh this. me too me too we'll get to um that. But then you get to Deanna and it seems like she's actively d- uncomfortable. I think Did it has a lot that? to do with because she's an empath and she's feeling the whole crew be confused and horny at the same time. So it's making her okay. confused and horny. So I think it's more of like a mental overload, an emotional overload than actually oh, okay. the, the virus affecting her directly. So while we're on Troy, this okay. is something oh, I noticed the uh, I have a story. <laughs> We should okay. Well, I have I have a question. So okay. why don't we do your story first? Do your story. Uh, we'll it's do it's the not as good story. as it sounds. But she asked me one time at a convention for a cigarette, and I had quit smoking, and I didn't have any cigarettes. Oh no! <laughs> yes. What What if I had still been smoking? Like, and she she got one from someone else, right? But what if she's like, okay, come smoke them with me, you know? Because. Uh, we were all hanging out that day, and she was like, you got a cigarette? I was like, I'm sorry, I don't smoke. And she's like, okay. She turned her head and went to somewhere else, and I was like, oh, what if? What if I wasn't trying to live longer? I'm going I might to have say smoked a cigarette with Marina Sirtis. She would not have tried to bang you, dude. So you're doing it in reverse order anyway. It's supposed to you be don't know. naked. No, the virus. cigarette afterwards. <laughs> and then the sex. Yeah. I think I met her twice, three times. But that was that was her most uh opportunistic for me in a uh, uh, zero 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 point one percent chance uh encounter <laughs> the other the other encounter was family friendly because that's when her and serenity were best friends for a day but that's another story for another time i'm trying to think of a cigarette pun encounter at tar point ah, I like tar it. Tar point. yeah i, the I have naked, to explain the joke ooh, the non-filter now right <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I kicked myself in the nuts for a while on that. I think I started smoking the day after again. Just right? in case yeah. my mom didn't. Just in case. <laughs> just in case she happened to be walking down the street and in need of a cigarette. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You what know. was your what was your thing you were gonna say before I so really um, interrupted you with my cigarette story? So they changed the Marina's look in this one again. Mm. They had that that weird hairdo that she has in season one with the with the top knot it's and the beads and all that crap. But she also has a much more distinctive alien sounding accent. Mm. And I know that it comes and goes throughout the series, but she seems to really lean into it in this season one and it seems to get kind of less and less and less until it's just marina speaking like marina so i don't know if she's putting something on or am i just hearing something like she, what, she is uh she spoke about this at conventions um marina said she was uh, a british person trying to do an american accent and that's how it came out and they thought it was good for an alien accent so they told her to go with it so gotcha that's what that is well, yeah. Oh, so it was a bad right. American accent, but it does sound weird, especially when you meet Luwaxana, her mom, who speaks perfect English. Yeah. 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 So, like, I mean, that's what happened there. You know, it never even occurred to me that Marina sounds British. She just sounds like Marina. And maybe I just don't notice oh. British accents that much. Anymore. She sounds British in real life. OK. Big time. All right. I, I, I met her okay. three times, three times, three times. Yeah. Well, Nicely. She got better at her American than I guess. Still gorgeous to this day. Just a weird observation. Just a weird observation. And I feel like they're trying to do everything they can to make her less attractive in the first season. I don't know what it is. First with that that fright wig in Encounter Farpoint, and now this weird whatever wig with the with the it just it's just not appealing. It well, and- well they they make up for that later. They'll fix that when she's I think drunk again or. In, influenced by something and she answers the door in that uh yes <laughs> i knew you were going to go there because Ooh, always my, my brain goes there once a day what can i say <laughs> and you need a cigarette <laughs> and then it needs Are we a gonna, it's gonna be all it's gonna be all sex jokes huh i don't that's smoke what now, this one's about but if i ever go to another star trek convention where marina Sirtis is i'm gonna stop on the way and have a pack of smokes 
<laughs> okay. Where in do we jacket. go besides, besides, um, okay. So now you're talking about how you wanted to have sex with Marina. All right. So, uh, no, next- I just wanted to get to know her, maybe date her, maybe take her to dinner. <laughs> we, I mean, no reason to be so crude. I just wanted to hang out with her, you know, anywho. Uh, but, anywho. uh, Beverly is very horny in this episode and her and Patrick together are amazing in these scenes. I love I it. will I will I will die on this hill and I will fight okay. you to the death over this. We will differ in our opinions, I, I'm sure. Patrick Stewart is maybe one of the finest actors to ever tread the boards, to ever get in front of a camera, to ever play a character, any character. He is world class. I have never seen a worse performance from anyone on Star Trek, including Bill Shatner, than Patrick gives in this episode. What? This, he <laughs> is on. awful playing drunk. Awful. What? what is this where he's just like doing these little skips? I love the hop. I have that written down in my ha- notes. <laughs> Captain Picard <laughs> I mean, hopping. I have to say, the... I, I thought that the, the scenes between Beverly and John Luke were fairly cringe mm-hmm. in the beginning, but the chemistry between Gates and Patrick is always there. So it's like the, the kind of the smoldering undertone works, but the comedy overtone is just unwatchable. And I, I, I had such mixed emotions because, again, I've said this uh, in the first episode, Gates is a strikingly beautiful woman. Gorgeous. And she's she's like just, you know, giving him the eye. And I never knew how much I love these front zip uniforms until this episode. But at the same time, it's like it's all in service of the most screamingly bad dialogue and acting I've seen on Star Trek ever. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I loved it. I really did. I love them drunk together. I love them horny for each other. I loved before Patrick was too affected by the virus. Uh, uh, Jean-Luc, before he was too affected by the virus, he was clueless. Beverly was uh, coming on to him and he's like, about what? Like he, he was so confused. He didn't know what she was talking about until she was like, I haven't had the comfort of a man. And she starts to take the zipper down. But before that, he's just totally clueless. But once, once like they have that horny, horny interaction where uh, they're like mere inches or uh, for the rest of the world, uh, meters, kilometers, I don't know, distance away from each other, (laughs) away from each other. And it's like that whole, (laughs) I love that part. Mm -hmm. Um, But we haven't time for that sort of thing. Uh, but after that, then they're by, like a couple of like teenagers that are in like puppy love. And I love it. The hop and the skip because he's happy because he thinks he's going to get some. He doesn't know he's got to wait a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And and it happens off camera. Right? Yeah. Uh, we don't get to see it either. And I don't mean the act. I just mean the the fact that they're even a thing. We join it after it it's over. It, 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 they were a thing. You didn't get to see it. Now they're not a thing, but they have this thing over here. Who's kind of half bored. Um, <laughs> but read that uh, book. I, I told you about uh, Q were cordially invited about their wedding. It's a really okay. great book. I'll put that um, on my list, yeah, but um, I want to, but I w- horny Beverly is amazing. Yes. And I don't mind horny Beverly, but again, going back to the conceit of the naked now or the naked time, mm-hmm. You had the vulnerability coming out and how much more interesting would it have been instead of having Patrick do bad comedy um, instead to have his inhibitions slowly crumbling and him reluctantly admitting that he is so super attracted to Beverly, but he feels he can't act on it because he's even said this in, in future episodes. Well, you're Jack's wife. And maybe he's tormented about that. Maybe he's conflicted about it. Maybe he feels guilty that Jack died while under his command. And he had to bring this woman's husband's body home to her and her son. Yet at the same time, he's totally into her and really, really wants her sexually. And that would have been great because it would have been a little bit more meaty than whatever the f- they were doing. I'm sorry. We're not supposed to curse, right? I mean, yeah. I. I, I just see maybe behind the paywall. 
Yeah. And this is, again, maybe this is hindsight, knowing these characters after 35 years, projecting what you know should be, you know, and this is episode three. So, so, you know, maybe they, they hadn't established that, that dynamic, but they kind of hinted at it a little bit in Encounter at Farpoint. And I think it was supposed to be there from the beginning. I mean, that was the Sam and Diane, will they, won't they kind of mm-hmm. thing. So, I, again, another missed opportunity. I could maybe see the wharf thing if they just threw him in last minute. Okay, yeah. we didn't have a part mm-hmm. for Michael other than to sit there. But if the John Luke Beverly sort of will they, won't they was going to be an issue throughout, then why not use this as a perfect opportunity to 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 really play that up and to establish the fact that they want to, but they feel like they can't. So to me, it's a lot like uh, coming of age. I did a interview with uh, Sandy Freeze, Professor Sandy Freeze, friend of mine who wrote the episode coming of age, which is the 19th episode of season one, where we find out more about uh, Wesley and and Jack Crusher and and what happened to Wesley's dad. Uh, Captain Picard had to make a decision of who to save, uh, and he chose not to save Jack. So I don't know if they were friends and he knew Beverly and he decided not to save Jack, but in coming of age in that simulation that Wesley goes through, uh, he has to choose between somebody who's incapacitated and somebody who's just scared and, and like frozen out of fear. So uh, if the examples as similar as it seems, then uh, Captain Card picked the person that couldn't help themselves. That's who he helped when the other person could have helped themselves, which was Jack Crusher. So, I'd I'd like to know more. I don't know if Memory Beta has any information on like that backstory and maybe there was a love triangle back then. But the main thing I take away from this episode is they were horny for each other. There was there was a there was a, they wanted a relationship. I think you're right about um Captain Picard being like feeling guilty about it what had happened and he couldn't take advantage of that. And it takes them a long time. This is more, less of a Sam and Diane, which I would have really liked more of a, we find out here and then uh, we skip to what season five or six where they're attached. You seen that episode yet where they're connected by their brains. Yeah. I, but that's the one I remember when it's like, she says something, why didn't you tell me that you were in love with me or something like yeah, that? He's we dead. really and don't he's find out because, much between the two. Because you're, you're Jack's wife, you, you know, yeah. You were, he, that's what he says. You were Jack's wife. So mm-hmm. I couldn't, you know, and they, that I think that's as far as they ever really acknowledged it openly mm-hmm. after this. But, but again, I am, I, if I've seen these episodes, I've seen most of them only once and I'm okay. only in the mid, the middle of season four on my proper rewatch, which I'm suspending now because we're just going to go through all of it again anyway. Oh, cool. 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 So, yeah. Um, then we see that they're divorced and all good things. And that's not a spoiler because it's on the action figures. It says Beverly or, Cap, or Beverly Picard, Captain Beverly Picard. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Later on, that's, in Picard, a, that's an alternate timeline. That's a different timeline. Oh yeah, that's true. But they do get married yeah. in that book. But that's the memory beta thing. Yeah, that's so, that's not, not canon. canon. But they did. Yeah. But we do know that they did eventually, you know, get together and have Jack. In Picard, were they married and divorced, or were they just together I, and not together? They never said whether or not they were ever married or how Jack came about. I mean, it just only stands to reason to me that they would eventually do something to consummate this this years long Mm -hmm. relationship, especially if they're in professional circles where, you know, they haven't met anybody else or it's just like, you know, I guess you get to know somebody and they're in the environment that you are going to be in and you're with them. And I think I, I, I love to steal this term from the movie Vanilla Sky, proximity infatuation, you know? Yeah, yes, it, that's it, the it, only it, thing that she, works for me. Yeah, but I mean, she's there. Yeah, She's available. He's there. He's available. They both know each other. They both trust each other. They both had, you know, countless adventures and misadventures together. So why not just, you know, make this thing real? Let's just take it to the next level. doesn't mean they need to get married. And I don't know that they ever really discussed marriage that much in next gen at all. I know that we have the, like the Betazoid thing and they Naked do it in, in the, ori- the original series. You see Kirk performing um, a wedding in the beginning of Balance of Terror. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and Data's Day. 
Keiko and uh, uh, Keiko Miles and Miles. So you know, getting married is a thing still, but original you series too. You don't really episode. have to, you know. Or they almost it's, get married. Well, they get they almost get married, and then the guy dies. Yeah, imbalance of terror. Um, <laughs> um but, uh, uh, pro- yeah. I like that proximity. What? Infatuation. Infatuation. That's that's why I I had many many girlfriends because I was stuck in a building with them for you know, months at a time. And then they finally got to know me. Uh, right. <laughs> n- now I work at home and I work alone. So that doesn't work for me anymore. So I, I don't know what's going on. I've had a bit of a dry decade spell. <laughs> well, I mean, get out of the house. I mean, that, that's what, that's what that says to me. I walked around central park and not one hippie hit on me. There weren't any hippies. It's New York in, in the 2020s. Oh, uh, there were some artists. You need a time types. machine. I'm trying to think, did anybody hit on me? No, no. You don't count, right? I didn't. No. No, I don't um, count. But I was I was in the city of like two and a half million people and, and nothing. So maybe I just had to stay in proximity with somebody longer. Vanilla Sky, February maybe. 30th, right? Okay, very cool. Um, <laughs> but see, this is why this episode is good, I think, because it sets up so many things for the future, including the Beverly Picard thing. But another reason I think it's really good is because, um, do you know the story of the first captain of Voyager? Uh, Guinevere, I'm going to um, say her last name wrong. Je, je, uh, Jean-Vierre Bougeot. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know she's, 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 she's horrible. A if you've seen the friend. clips, she was just horrible at being captain. Yeah, I, that was on purpose. She wanted out of the contract. So she uh, gave the worst performance she possibly could so that they would fire her. Uh, yeah. That's anyway, that's what I read because she's kind of like a world class actress. She's been in a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. She didn't need Voyager, to, mm-hmm. she was already established. I'm, I'm so glad for they some didn't. Reason, keep her. Yeah. But, well, uh, I mean, because you can't, in retrospect, if she had stayed and she wanted the role, she might have been great. Yeah. But uh, my point is uh, Picard in Encounter at Farpoint and the first part of Naked Now seems kind of like her performance there. Very, very stiff, very whatever the it factor is, zero it factor. And like, I didn't want to know who Captain Picard was really at that time. But after the Naked Now, after we find out, you know, the skipping and the waving and the, <laughs> I think he's yeah, more. What the of hell the was Captain that? Picard that stutter. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I, I want to do that. That's, that's kind of like, like he's trying to control all of himself and just it comes out. The horny comes out as a vocalization. That's my only thought. Yeah. And they're Uh-oh. right there. Why didn't they? Yeah. They kiss later, but That's it's not thing. him, I think, right? Or you're um, not there yet. I don't think they kissed at all. I don't think either of them kissed anybody. Oh, it's in my uh, super edit on Trekaholic of the 4K Picard song. I put all their kisses in there. So I don't recall them ever kissing once. Because they ship them. We'll it's see. because it's uh, not the real Captain Picard. What is what is the one where he's like trapped with aliens and all he can eat is poison jello or something? Uh, the mirror universe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that one. People know what I'm talking about. But uh, is that the one where they, they have to open the an, door and then the door turns out to be yep. another door behind it? There's and a they have the guy that's sitting on the bed and the Nosekin yep. and yeah. Yeah, but so so there's a the, the Breen the Breen ensign. Yeah, is, there's a fake Picard, the and that's who Beverly kisses, I think. Oh, okay, that's right. Because he comes in, he's all horny. He yeah. he makes her dinner. He kisses her, and he's like, "Okay, you can go now." <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take that, Great Beverly. Chance. So so, I liked all their interactions. I I like if I was drunk. I'd probably be acting like that. I probably do act like that when I'm drunk. I don't know. Uh, I had a I had a iced tea on Long Island once, so you could tell me. Uh, well, listen. I mean, if uh, you did act that way, you didn't do it toward me. All right. And uh, you know, uh, there were plenty of people in that restaurant though where you had yeah, that. And iced our tea our server was named like. Alexa, and I didn't tell my joke. I was going to be like Alexa, steak, please. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. She I'm I'm sure I'm sure she never gets that. <laughs> exactly. I knew I was going to be like the third person in that hour to do that, so that's why I didn't do it. But I think what did come out was I went <laughs> 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 whatever Picard does. I don't know. Um well, all right. So I like so it. we So who else was horny? We've okay. Done... Oh, let, let's talk about Tasha. Yeah. 
let's talk Tasha. About Tasha. Let's talk about Tasha and Data. Tasha and Data. Before right, so before talk- Data, she's making out with somebody else in the hallway. Right. She just she just grabs him and and and, and, him. and he was looking horny at her, right? But but this is interesting. There's that sound that when the virus transfers from one person to another, there's that sound yeah, when like, they're kissing. It's like the it's like Jason's coming to get you. The exactly. <laughs> it's just to let you know that the virus transmitted. Uh, yeah, but in right, this right. case, the guy in the hallway is just horny without that. Then he's just looking. No, at well, him like, I mean, hey, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> she just grabs him and starts kissing him. I mean, I so I don't know that he had that. that he had a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I kind of liked. The way that uh, your uh, why, Denise, Denise Crosby, Denise Crosby, I like the way that she played it because Yar is always so super straight and mm-hmm. she looked to be like the the only one that was having like fun that seemed legitimate. You know, like Patrick's the, the the quote fun parts of that to me, like I said, were painful. I think Denise nailed it. And I loved when she's just going down the hall and like snapping her fingers and she's like all swaying. And I realized oh, that's where Toby Maguire got his inspiration for Spider-Man three when he was <laughs> evil Peter Parker. I mean, it was it was kind of like that vibe when she was walking down the hall. This and way. the um, hips. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I. It's nice that they were able to give Denise something to do other than stand behind the horseshoe and bark out orders about shooting something. And Mm -hmm. I don't know that we ever got much more development out of Tasha. I think we've gotten some. And I'm going to rip off the the mission log guys here because I think that they nailed it. They said that uh, Tasha could be a really good character when they bothered to write for her. And I think in this one, they actually bothered to write for her. So she became much more interesting and three dimensional, Mm -hmm. but that varies so much in the short time that she's on the show. I think some episodes serve her better than others. This is one that serves her better. And you would expect that she would have been a bigger character because she has a major role in encounter Farpoint. I mean, I think she's got, as much as much to do as as patrick does Mm -hmm. and in this she's you know she's front and center as the the main vector of the virus her and jordy and you know episode four as well i'm I'm trying to remember what episode four is oh oh yeah code of honor yeah she's she's a focal point in that one as well so they Mm -hmm. really you know they were banking heavily on this character so that was nice to see what is it with data? And here we go. I'm glad they started writing away from this stuff because it just doesn't make any freaking sense. He has no idea what colloquialisms are. <laughs> like, why would why would one wish to search for a needle in a haystack or whatever? It's just like, I don't buy. Like you said, what did they just take him out of the box and turn him on? He went through the freaking academy. Mm-hmm. Like, how does he not know just basic terms, like figures of speech? Igniting the midnight petroleum, stuff like that. Yeah, I like it. I get it. You want he's a robot, so he's got to yeah. have sort of that 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 weird. Oh, I don't get you, wacky humans, <laughs> kind of thing. But it it just doesn't play. It doesn't play at all. I'm think trying to think what else they could do because that's a big thing I think in season one, part of season two, and then it comes up here and there. But uh, mostly season one, and that's just because every episode they need to remind you if you haven't seen any other episodes that he's a robot. Mm, I guess, I guess, yeah, maybe that's it's a victim of the TV of the time, right? Like because uh, you you're not watching them all, or maybe you caught this this episode five, mm-hmm. and I've heard good things about this. Oh, he's the robot guy, yeah. So be a robot, yeah. robot guy, <laughs> yeah. So you gotta like <laughs> uh, reintroduce everyone every time, pretty much for the first season. And uh, this is a this is also a victim of it was made in 1987 because I mean besides that because now we have AI that would totally be able to pass the uh, what is it the Turing test or is that what it's called I think it's called the Turing test yeah yeah um, but uh, besides that we have like internet searches and and one of the scenes here is Riker comes to Data and asks Data to search computers to find out somebody somewhere at some time taking a shower in their clothing. So mm-hmm. that's like mm-hmm. just a normal search you would do now just on your on your communicator that you carry around. Um, but uh, by then, it's probably in a neural implant, right? 
in the 24th century. You just go, oh yeah, these are all these people that took well, for for data work. anyway. I would think that data would have kind of some yeah. kind of Wi-Fi access to the computer. But back but then there was always, no always search engines. There was no internet. You know, if there was, it was very rudimentary and mostly like bulletin board based and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So all the pads you couldn't could just only ask have a like question and get an answer. Yeah. I guess I did like that scene though when he's scrolling through the library computer and they do have the schematic of the original 1701. I That's in that there, and also Gene Roddenberry on the body of a bird. Oh God! Okay, because he's the great really, bird. Really, but not like get grow that great bird bullshit, huh? All right, <laughs> <laughs> but it's in there. It's in there. Uh, Oku- the Akuda's uh, hid some stuff in there, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But then I was that brought up another question. I was watching that someone sometime somewhere taking a shower in his or her clothing. And I was like, th- th- did not everybody take a shower in their clothing at some point in their life? I remember showering in my clothes. I don't know. Is that like unusual? I don't think I've ever done that, but I don't think it would be that unusual for the 24th century, considering that they have to conserve water on starships and you have sonic showers. It's sonic. Anyway, yeah. th- that's what they said in the original series. It was sonic showers in the novels and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there are scenes in um, some of the books I read where Kirk just steps into the sonic shower fully clothed and he comes out all crisp and fresh because the sound waves. I don't think, but he probably still has some BO, right? Like, God, because where does it go? Soap and water. Soap yeah. and water. Soap and water is good for you. Soap and water. You know, yeah, I'm using the new Papa Tui. I'm using the new Papa I got Papa Tui soap. Uh, deodorant. I got new face cream and some under eye stuff. Let me know if it works as we go on in the season. What's Papa Tui? It's uh, The Rock's new uh, health and beauty line. Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> is The Rock is The Rock paying us? No, no. But he could if anybody wants to sponsor a I'm segment of the show or the entire show. Let me look at the email. camera. I'm going to spike the camera. Dwayne, if you're watching, we'll take your money. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Well, love but your stuff. <laughs> it smells good. It smells like coconut. So, And it's cruelty-free and uh, uh serenity says it's helping i smell pretty now so we'll see okay Hopefully good. these uh, bags right. go away so we'll see. i guess your your both of your senses of smell are coming back after the long COVID. um it's hit and miss it really is sometimes you can smell a burger sometimes you can't it's sad okay yeah well it's uh it's infrequent but it does work here and there but what what i'm picking up is that you're smelling what the rock's cooking exactly and that's coconut <laughs> <laughs> so that's good um but uh what, what were we talking about oh horny horny uh horny, horny data R with data horny R horny data horny R horny data so gene ronberry got his wish uh some hot chick had sex with a robot <laughs> for some reason he had that well, fetish and needed to write I, it i did i did like the fact that they made data vulnerable mm-hmm. to the virus and he went from annoying in this episode, annoyingly clueless to just Brent having the time of his life, hamming it up as much as he could, because data is blatantly emotional in these mm-hmm. first few scenes. And I don't know um, if he's programmed to react that way, to seem more human, even though he doesn't have those emotions, he's maybe programmed to quote, smile, like he does at Wesley, that that ghastly, ungodly, <laughs> terrifying smile in the holodeck. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that's, again, that's an aspect of the character that gets played down as it evolves, as Brent finds the groove. And I kind of like seeing this version of Data. Um, I And I really like the fact that, you know, he found the comedy. He's one of the ones that made it work. Like both him and Denise made the comedy work, especially on the bridge when he just goes to lean back and he falls <laughs> over, you know? And I of absolutely course, you love know, that you part. Have Worf, Worf there not reacting at all. <laughs> That's so Brent. That is so Brent. Uh, and, and it makes you wonder about data. Cause he, he, when he's, when he is affected by this virus, so basically drunk, uh yeah. he's smiling he's enjoying himself he's very loosey-goosey so it, is that him and he's just very repressed uh, normally yeah i i so so maybe it's a yes, huge facade I, I don't know do you want to hear my brand story i i'd love to hear i have i have maybe some headcanon about how it's affecting him Okay, let's do that in my Brent story. Right. Okay. So he's saying that he has some kind of nutrient, whatever fluid. If you prick me, do I not leak instead of bleed? But he (laughs) says that's kind of like, maybe that's like blood, he says, right? It's sort of like your blood. 
I have pores, I have skin, I have blood, and um, maybe the virus is in there making connections that otherwise would not have been made between like his his positronic network and his nutrient gel or whatever's running through his veins and creating new pathways so that's kind of either isn't yeah it's it, either he wasn't programmed with them and now it 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 facilitates sort of these connections that weren't there or he hadn't evolved to the point where he could access that programming yet because i think that becomes an aspect of his character as he goes on he's supposed oh, to very learn. good he's supposed to evolve very so good. maybe like it, it maybe it it sort of jump started some of that evolution that should have happened more naturally over time as soon had designed him that's what i that's what i think and then once they cured him those connections went away and this might be an alien virus that is highly adaptive. So it adapts for humans, and then it went into an android body and adapted to that system to try to survive. Fluid's fluid, baby. And propagate. He's fully functional. <laughs> That's what he says. That's mm -hmm. what he says. Uh, he can so spread that virus story. just like everybody else. <laughs> Brent is So what's funny. the Brent story? He messed with me once. So I met him three times, two times, three times, three times, two times. I was in the same room with him three times. I met him twice. Uh, okay. So the first Glad time I met him, out. I got a photo <laughs> with him. I got a photo with him, right? And he's like, oh, hi, how's it going? Uh, do I know you? I was like, I don't think so, because I would remember that. And he was like, <laughs> no, it's like, is it Al? Al, right? Albert? What is it? I was like, yeah, Albert. I go by Al or Albie. And he's like, yes, Albie, how you doing? You don't remember me? I was like, no, I think I would have remembered you. <laughs> So he's like, yeah, I think I met you before. I was like, oh, well, that's, you know, and I'm meeting Brent Spiner while this is all happening. And I'm not realizing he's messing with me. Right. So I get my picture with him and he's just great. He spends about five minutes with me, which is crazy because the line's down the hall because he's Brent freaking Spiner. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm leaving and I'm just like, what just happened? I don't remember meeting him before. And if I did, how would he remember me? He's met 10,000 people this month, this year, probably. Right. So I'm walking down the hall and I'm going to get my picture because back then they printed out the picture and left it on the table for you. Um, and I'm like walking down the hall and I'm like, I look down and I'm like, I have my uh, my convention name tag on that just says Albert on it on the front. <laughs> you didn't pick up on that, did you? No, he was just messing with me the whole time. <laughs> Love him. I'm sure he does That's that all cool. the time. How many, times, how many times have you met the the cast? members all together once when they came to orlando for megacon it was all about the next generation when they're on tour and i met all seven eight of them at the same time uh, i didn't get a photo with all of them i got photos with the ones that i hadn't had photos with before so they're all separate because it's like 150 bucks or something each one and i yeah. think that it was 800 to get it for the whole cast or something which makes sense but how many have you met multiple times <sighs> frakes a bunch Marina the most, I think. Uh, John Delancey twice. Patrick once. Um, I never met. Um, I never met uh, Tasha, Denise. I never met Denise. Denise? She no. was there, but I didn't pay the extra two hundred dollars because I was still a little mad at her that she left the show because I didn't know the full backstory Gates? back then. Hmm? How about Gates or Michael? Gates, I met um, twice. Once at a photo shoot, uh, we got a photo with uh, Serenity and me and her. And uh, Gates actually held Serenity, and Gates and Serenity was playing with her necklace and stuff. And we're, I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And she's like, "No, I love babies." And she was like, "Just you know, goo 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 with uh, Serenity." Uh, Brent did that too. It was really cool. But um, the other time I met Beverly, I'll say that for another time. But it's a good story. Okay, cool. But yeah, a bunch of yeah. them. I met a bunch of them. These are my heroes, you know. In real life and on the show. Kind of so, like yeah, you. Denise came, Denise came to uh, one of the icons once and uh, she did a stage show. It was pretty funny. Like it was kind of like an improv comedy thing that she was doing with other guests that were there. I feel like Claudia Christian might have been one of them. Oh, I love her. And uh, I interviewed her. Yeah. So um, I don't know that I met either of them up close, though. My friend Howard uh, does a radio show, a science fiction show on the campus the the radio sh the the radio station on stony brook campus so he interviewed everybody who came through icon so i'm sure that he's met you know if denise was there he's probably he interviewed her like every year you know um 
but it's cool. You know, I was never more, more than a, just, oh, there's somebody and I can acknowledge that I saw them, but I don't want to bother them. I mean, I was walking on campus once during uh, one of the icon conventions and I went to school there. So I knew the campus well. And Nana was just standing right outside of like the humanities building and she was talking to somebody and I wanted to go up and say hello, mm. but I didn't. I just felt like, ah, oh, you're going to be bothering her. And she's not like at a panel and she's not like at a signing table and she's just out here, maybe getting a breath of fresh air. And this guy's already up her ass. Like th then she wants me waiting in the wings. So mm -hmm. I just, I just kept walking. Now I regret it because, you know, here is probably my favorite character next to Kirk in the whole franchise. So I think like, I wish, I wish I had been able to tell her that while I had the opportunity, she's still alive. I could tell her, I could yeah. just write her a letter or something, but you know, face to face would have been nice. And I don't uh, know that she's still on the convention circuit anymore or anything like that. I'm like, well, no, no, I would have loved that. She, she's maybe not loved it, but she would have been cool with it because she is, uh, as far as I understand, one of the most giving to the fans. Uh, she, she's like, ha has so many fans around the world and she like, remembers their name for real and she's like friends with them and she's very giving and very uh gives back to the fan community and she's very very appreciative of her fans so it might cool. it might not not have been fun but you would have had a good time <laughs> okay. well, yeah Nana's great. she's got a new book out about uh women in star trek so she's on a book tour maybe i should give her a give her a holiday. Oh, that's cool yeah maybe yeah. i can see her and maybe she'll be in manhattan maybe i yeah, can do it uh, like look that. it up look at her oh. website we'll figure that out Maybe I'll fly. So out are we are we avoiding talking about two really big aspects of this episode? I guess while we're on Yar. Wait, I, I'm still on. I'm still on horny uh, Tasha. That's what Yar. That's what I meant. OK, yeah. So while we're on Yar. So you go ahead. I get I got to remember you're the host. I'm not. I'm just. The oh, no, no. We're both hosts. We're equal. hosts. No, I'm so. color. I'm, I'm, I'm just color. Uh, I don't know. I think you're the smart one and I'm the nerdy one. Maybe. I don't know. I think I'm the nerdy one and the smart one, and you're the handsome one. Oh, no, you're the handsome one and the smart one. My mom calls you the smart one, and she just calls what me is, Albie, so I don't know. What does your mom know? Come on. <laughs> she watches the Quantum <laughs> Leap podcast, so she calls you the smart one. Um, well, well this, what, what, this, what else? What else? What else? What else? So this scene, I watched it many times when I was 12, 13, 14, probably. Uh, on the, I had that little A, B function on the VCR. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> sorry i was showing uh, In, inside joke inside joke yes sir. Uh, bread restaurant um, um the ab so, no i had the ab switch where you could go between like a cable output oh, no. and this is more uh, like the, it, yeah, it, it plays else. a section of the videotape and then it stops it rewinds it or it rewinds it plays it rewinds it plays it rewinds it plays it over oh and over yeah again. no we didn't have that it sounds that sounds like a recipe for disaster <laughs> it loops the tape so yeah. um so I, I watched that part on loop a lot i really appreciated tasha in this wait episode. what part <laughs> the part, part where about? uh she's coming on the data and data is all like uh i'm fully functional you know gotcha uh, so when she's standing in the doorway yeah when she's standing with, in the doorway with, with and when superman she pushes him into curl. the bed yeah with the superman yeah. curl um I always found that uh, an interesting scene because I'm assuming at the time that um, Data was a virgin. And, you know, I mean, he didn't know about needles and haystacks. I, I don't think that, <laughs> so. Uh, you know, yeah. He's not a man of the world, <laughs> which which I think would be weird. Like after this after this uh, scene that happened, uh, it makes sense moving forward with his thoughts and feelings towards Tasha because uh, he was uh, Tasha was his first. But I always found it uh, intriguing because I thought my first time would be like like that. But what, I wasn't that somebody would just uh, accost you and throw you down. Yeah, but that never quite happened. I mean, that says a lot about you. But <laughs> well, I always thought I was I a robot. I used to think I was a <laughs> Vulcan, but then I thought I was a robot. Um, but okay. I, I really enjoyed that scene and I really enjoyed the what came out after it. Another thing that happened in The Naked Now that affected a, a lot of uh, Next Gen moving forward, which was uh, the affection that Data felt for for Tasha, you know, with uh, any any time you saw like his his effects around the around the room or something that was important to him. It always was that hologram of Tasha. Mm, so. Yeah. And they even played that up in. Uh season eight also called Picard season three Picard. Yeah. So yeah. he never quite so, lost the crush on her. 
I did no. find it odd when Tasha was coming on the data that she was giving her backstory as well. Like she was That's the other thing that was sort of the other elephant in the room when it comes to Tasha in this episode. Yeah, she, I mean she's so she's so loosey goosey and so freely sexual. It's refreshing, it's fun, mm -hmm. it's great. And then she's talking about being 9 years old and running from gangs or even think she was yeah. 5 years old. Like she said she was alone for 10 years. Yeah. abandoned basically on the streets. And yeah, she was from 5 to 15 running from gangs now let's have sex like yeah so what who wrote when that I was, when, when i was younger i i kind of just glossed over that and that was just you know ex exposition but now i think looking back uh now i'm older that i'm thinking that uh her trauma caused her need to be overly sexual maybe and she thought that maybe that was her only true value that only that's only people wanted. So she might not have even been horny. She might have just been trying to. Um, what are what are my words? I'm trying to say she just wanted to feel valid. And she thought maybe she was so traumatized by that, that she thought that was her only contribution when she was drunk. So she might have been having like some kind of crisis like Jordy was. Uh, but but outwardly making it difficult, which makes that scene so much more horrible to watch now than it did when I was a kid. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't picked up on that at all. I mean, I guess down in the comments below, people can tell us where we're idiots about this and mm -hmm. what might have been going on or it just to me was such an odd juxtaposition to, you know, just bring that up so casually in the middle of what is, ostensibly a fun scene mm. so it's it it's just like wow that's heavy that's some heavy shit mm -hmm. um and I, again a, maybe a missed opportunity because i was complaining earlier about how the characters in this were drunk instead of conflicted but we did get that from jordy Mm -hmm. And maybe they started writing it that way and realized if we have everybody doing this, this is going to be a super heavy downer of, a, of an episode. Mm -hmm. So maybe we just go the complete opposite direction. Maybe it's because you have it too hot in here. <laughs> See, it is a joke. It just didn't work in the 24th century, but it works now. Okay, cool, cool. I guess so. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, just well, what, just what about Jordy wanting to see, you know, and, and beautiful human colors, shallow human ways. Yes, I like better that. is I mean, not a, better. Or what does he say? Something like that. More, more is not, is always, not better. always better, or something which is like true. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, but again, that it, sort of taking a page from the original premise mm -hmm. that they're aping here. So, um, but he kind of loses that pretty he goes back and forth he gets he's nasty and he's hot and when he gets up to go out of sick bay why does he just casually take off his combat <laughs> like why is he even thinking of his combat oh because we need to not be able to find him because show so i i i was kind of, that kind of took me out of it but i like lavar's take mm -hmm. and i feel like maybe they gave him some of the more dramatic stuff because at that point, LeVar was known for roots. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you have Kunta Kinte, one of yeah. the most, you know, one of the most recognizable actors on the show mm -hmm. to that point, probably the most recognizable actor on the show who has this, this track record of this groundbreaking TV drama that, you know, a gazillion people watched in the late seventies. So it's, I think that maybe they gave him the more meaty stuff because they knew he could handle it. Could be. I don't know. And that's why but, he's always uh, reading books because, you know, he's known for reading Rainbow. Right. Uh huh. And he did say he wanted to see a rainbow. Did he in this? So, oh, yes, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah so. Ah, I totally miss that. See, it's good. I'm, I'm watching this with you. I'm yeah, learning yeah, as well, I go. Yeah. See, you're, you are the smart one. I'm waiting I for, was I was really trying to think it. of a reading rainbow joke and I couldn't. So, um, you don't have to take my word for it. Fit that in somewhere later. It'll work. Um, <laughs> what I was thinking was when you're either drunk or let's say elevated, 
uh, so a lot of times you think about everything and you're overthink and time slows down, mostly when you're elevated, but who knows how this virus happens. But sitting there in the sick bay, he would know that if he left, cause he's under quarantine by being just told to sit there. So that was a very weak <laughs> quarantine. But was like, does this ship have no quarantine protocol at all? No, apparently it doesn't. <laughs> If he if he had a whole plan worked out, he would know, oh, I got to take because he's you know, he's this is every day for him. So, like, if you were going to go commit a murder, let's say, right, you wouldn't bring your phone with you because, you know, now, oh, I got to turn that off. You, you wouldn't, wouldn't bring your communicator with you because you, you, you'd you be tracked. Right. And he was trying to escape quarantine. So I think he would take his he he would be present enough to take off his communicator. So that didn't bump me. All right. All right. Well, but his performance was great. Yeah, he was good. Um, do we need to talk about Wes? Wes, yes. Uh, Wesley and uh, Jordy are best friends. We find out in this episode, mm-hmm. and they go back to it never. <laughs> <laughs> this to me, um, on my first rewatch, or really initial watch, honestly, of, mm-hmm. of Next Gen a few mm-hmm. months ago, I never really knew how big of a character they made Wesley mm-hmm. in in the first season. I mean, Wesley was in every episode being the boy genius, and uh, that starts with this with this episode. And there are some neat turns here. I mean, I'm sorry, they the fact that Wesley looks like he's 17, even though he's supposed to. How old is he supposed to be? I want to say 14. Yeah, but Will looks he looks older. Mm-hmm. And even at 14, if you're drunk, the first thing you're going to do is order extra desserts with meals. It's like, what is he, five? What's he, in kindergarten? Yeah. It's they like, missed the mark a, on that one. Yeah, I. it's like, what? What are? You, what are you going for with this character? But then it gets interesting because the the chief engineer, who I don't think we ever see again, what's her name? McDougal. McDougal. Or McDougal. Or Mc, McDougal. Okay, one McDougal. of my favorite chief engineers. McDougal. Yeah. Well, she comes in. First of all, he's got this repulsor field that was the tractor beam. Mm -hmm. There's just that one doorway that goes to that area of engineering. That's so (laughs) vitally important that I can take. Okay. So why don't they just beam somebody onto the other side of that repulsor field? They didn't. They could do that. Yeah. They could do that. But they don't because they don't. Because show. Right. Uh, And then you have this this stupid conceit of the the voice box mm-hmm. which i guess is supposed to show that wesley and in the 80s you know sampling stuff like that was, wow this is i just took it from the captain's voice on his overhead <laughs> comms what that sure that sure sounds smooth i guess the computer and the ai on the computer really, really helps you make it sound mm-hmm. like a sentence instead of a bunch of random cut clips you know um <laughs> But then he gets interesting again because McDougal is just like, well, we could reroute it the way you're saying, but that'll take weeks of drawing up the schematics. And he's like, no, just see it in your head. Mm-hmm. And he goes over there and he starts doing it. And it's just like, oh, they're establishing that this kid is a super genius. And he's on I another that, level. Yeah, that gets variably interesting to me in the first season. I I know when I came in, my whole thing about Wes was that he was maybe the most maligned character and I'm supposed to not like him. So this episode started me down the road of maybe not liking him. But as this first season goes on, actually the first couple of seasons go on, Wes is not as bad a character as everybody makes him out to be. And I guess maybe we can... Yeah, I, it was a bunch of haters, and I, we can maybe debate some of the lows and some of the highs, but I think Will did a fine job with what they gave him. Maybe not so much in this episode, but they didn't give him much, and he was supposed to be drunk, and it's like they're writing him like a four-year-old. And I, if, I was, if I was 14 and I was drunk, I would go to the Holodeck 3, right? <laughs> or try it's to bump into Tasha. Holodeck Tree is that like sexy holodeck? Uh, that's the one Riker always visits. So I don't know if that's first on the cleaning list or he's got a special lock for that one. You need shoes sure. with special traction in Holodeck Three. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think my first thing would be horny. But I think they didn't want horny kid. I think they wanted wide eye uh, wonder kid. That's why they were talking about dessert. 
before and after every <laughs> meal. But yeah, a lot of there was a lot of uh, hate going towards Will Wheaton back then, and I think unjustly so. Uh, I was always a fan because I was a couple years younger than Will Wheaton, I think. So, you know, I, I assumed he was my peer and he was my way onto the bridge when I was a kid. And uh, now in 2024 or in, in the present day, I want to make this evergreen. <laughs> um, I love Will Wheaton, everything he does. I love, you know, the ready room. Uh, oh, there was a thing. If you haven't checked it out, if you got VR, if you access to VR, um, there, cause there was like a six minute on the ready room, a thing about the new enterprise D the new one they built for Picard. Mm -hmm. um but they have like a 39 minute one with will wheaton and michael okuda on the bridge and it's all in 3d vr so like you can be there with them and stand around and look around and it's like you're really there it's amazing it's on paramount plus's youtube i think or star trek's youtube but it's uh it's vr and they're really there and it's like 45 minutes maybe 40 minutes but it was one of the best things i've seen it felt like really being on the new bridge and it was so it shows uh, Will's love for Star Trek. So, and he, he was cool. a big Trekkie before that. And he was the other big name on the show besides uh, LeVar Burton. Like those were the two names they got. Yeah. Yeah. Because Stand By Me had just come Stand out. Stand By Me. So he, yeah, yeah that, that kind of broke his, broke his career so, wide open. So, so anytime anybody hates on Will Wheaton or Wesley Crusher, I'm like, okay, I know who you are. I don't want anything to do with it. So I'm glad you're not one of those people. The show would end right here, Mr. I used to. I, I honestly, I, I used to hate on Will a little bit because mm -hmm. I just I found his ready room stuff well not unwatchable. He's got uh, I've said this before on Sean's show. He's got the guy's got one speed and it's gush, and it's just like you gotta That's throttle me. it back, Will. You That's gotta me. throttle it back. But then I listened to his um, appearance on. I think it was deep inside you, uh, the Michael Rosenbaum yeah. podcast. I interviewed him too. And, oh, you did, huh? Yeah. Great guy. Lex, Lex Luthor. Um, Smallville Lex Luthor anyway. Yep. yep. Uh, I, I had no idea what Will had gone through in his childhood. Yeah. And then I think he talked a little bit more about it on Mission Log with Mission Log guys. So I now have such a much deeper appreciation of Will Wheaton and everything he's been through and how he was treated on the set of that show by the producers and mm -hmm. how his parents treated him and, mm -hmm. you know, not to make him, not to victimize him or say, I only like him now because of his tale of woe. Mm -hmm. um, but he's been through a lot and he's come out of it as a strong individual with a good moral center. Mm -hmm. And it makes it hard for me to just rag on him gushing about his space dads all the mm -hmm. time, you know, which is just, it just got under my skin, got on my nerves, but it uh, never bothered I, me. I, I always, I always appreciated that. it just because that would be me. Like if I was in that situation. So I feel like, uh, Will Wheaton, the fan is the one interviewing on the ready room, not Will Wheaton, the actor mm -hmm. or the, the coworker of them, but he's really being a fan. And I believe he is genuine about being a fan. He was great on, um, uh, my Ambiolix, uh, podcast also. That's a good one to check out. And of course he wrote that book. I didn't blossom has a podcast. Amy yeah, Fowler yeah. Has, blossom a podcast. has a podcast. It's pretty good. Yeah, um, I have no idea. uh, so great guy. Love will, uh, I buy the things when he puts things out, you know? So cool. I love that, uh, ready player one. He, he read that. And then the, they mentioned in the book of ready player one, how will Wheaton's like a congressman or something. <laughs> that did something and he's reading it and it's, it's pretty awesome. It's like a crossing of the beams thing, but yeah, I'm a big, there fan. You go. <laughs> big fan. Cool. Um, cool. So that's one of the things that brought me into star Trek because I was already going to watch it because it's star Trek. Cause I was a big fan of the original series, but having a kid, my age or what I thought was my age at the time on, on the show. But yeah, I was definitely more into Tasha than into dessert before and after every meal. <laughs> Unless dessert has a different uh, meaning in, in the vernacular of the 24th century than it does Could now. be. Could be. Could I be. mean, yeah, you don't know what dessert is. Yeah, it could. <laughs> could be. Well, maybe we, it will refer yeah. to things as dessert from in the future. Maybe that's the only, maybe that's why he's only allowed to go to 10 forward for his meals. Yeah, you know? they couldn't really say BJ's <laughs> before and after every meal. So. <laughs> exactly. I mean, let's just see, you know, there's dessert and there's dessert. So, so what did you think of McDougal? McDougal, I was I thought McDougal did really good. I don't know the story behind why they abandoned that character. Uh, she seemed like a good chief engineer, except for not knowing the difference between control chips and isolinear chips. I, you know what? I mean, 
you think that they would have nailed down the fact that they would need an engineer character mm -hmm. early on because Scotty was such an integral part of the original series. And it's almost like, I, I think it was Jimmy Doohan who did an interview and he said, you know, they, they brought me on as a chief engineer, but they really had no idea what, and, what the the purpose of the character was but then as they were writing the show they realized that a ship is going to you better have a chief engineer because the ship is going to need one and it's going to play a, an important role throughout the series um you think that they would have come out of the gate with a chief engineer character and here we have the first of many rotating chief engineers in season one I think my favorite being Leland T. Lynch, uh, who's going to be coming <laughs> up soon. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, so I'm, I'm quite, quite frankly, you asked me what I think of McDougal. I'm baffled. I'm baffled by the fact that she's even there, quite frankly. And how is she there? And then she's not there. She's not a regular. She's not. It's like an afterthought. I, so what, I, what, I'd like what, to imagine a world where she was a regular because she seemed like an older woman, a sexy woman, you know, and she seemed uh, smart and confident. And I, I wanted to know more about her. I wonder if there's a book. I don't know. If not, write I'm that sure book. I'm sure there's Chris. a book for all these characters. No, I'm not interested in writing the McDougal book. I'm writing um, Leland T. Lynch on Leland T. Lynch, a Leland T. Lynch <laughs> <laughs> memoir. <laughs> uh, what was the other guy's name? Argyle? Was I think Argyle? Argyle, and he's the one yeah. he got himself fired off the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's um, a big story. So, yeah, but I, so. I I think where they uh, they ended with uh, Jordy was good because of him being the engineer, blind engineer, which is amazing. Yeah, I mean they gave Lavar a center. That's one thing that I noticed in this first. In I, I, again, it's early, so we're kind of jumping the timeline, but. Mm there's not really much use for Jordy. He's sort of the checkoff of the piece, you know, right. data is the Sulu Jordy's the checkoff, but beyond, you know, handling frequencies open, sir, or whatever, there's not a lot for him to do yet. They introduce him as one of the main cast. So again, you have a character that's an idea, but no real function that we can see on the ship other than to steer during the day shift. Mm -hmm. So at least Chekhov was also like a junior science officer, at least, you know, Sulu was not only Helm, but he was tactical and he'd go on the away, the away missions with them and, and everything. So, and he was the botanist. So he had other interests that were of use to the ship. And Jordy, it just seems like is hanging out with Wes and saying how smart Wes is and then going off and not having a date, you know, and that, that second part never ends. So, you, you find Tal Jack three. <laughs> well, well, eventually it must be because he's got two daughters. Unless, unless uh, Leah is still um, a hologram and he replicated the kids. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe he, uh, those two girls are. Uh... <laughs> yeah, maybe like Mike is, is, isn't real. Who knows? Right, um, right, right. What else happened in this? Do you look at your notes. I'll look at my notes. I think I think we've pretty much gone through all of my We're notes. Good? I mean, uh, I. I'm following your lead here. Whatever else you want to talk about. If you got anything to talk about while I look at my notes. Hit me, hit me, um, hit me. Hit me. Um, I think that the uh, Wesley making the Rigel hover throne with his tractor beam was a mm -hmm. pretty cool effect. That was probably a really neat effect, especially for like 1987. So, and I don't know what the original effects looked like but the remastered stuff about the star collapsing and what kind of ship was the Sarkovsky the Sil Silkowski Sil do you know Sarkovsky because I like so I, I really I always used to think it was uh, Tchaikovsky like the is it spelled the same as the composer no I mean I'm, I'm just going phonetically yeah, Tchaikovsky starts yeah. with a T. This sounded like Sil Silkovsky or something like Silkovsky. that. Anyway, whatever that dumb ship was, it had this sleek um, secondary hull and a very small saucer section. And it was a science really, vessel. Right. So it was sort of like the Grism, but updated. Or was mm -hmm. it the Grism? Was that the same as the Grism? I would say Grism, but I don't know. Because I'm thinking the Grism was in search for Spock, and mm -hmm. that gets destroyed. They might have reused the model because we learned in the last crew. episode, these are models. Right. Yeah. So I'm thinking, 
Yeah. You know what? We ask these questions. I should probably look this shit up before we get on. on the line, we'll we'll so. get feedback. Yeah. Help us out. Uh, yeah, there are a million people commanders. saying you idiots. Shut up, you <laughs> morons. Yes. Send us so we know. We'll learn along with, with you. Uh, I'm sure a hive mind will help. Um, I found it weird that uh, they blew out the bridge. And there it was that like that big um, porthole on the bridge. Like, I guess that's where they connect to other ships or something. What would you call that? Uh, airlock on the bridge? It just seemed weird. Oh, you're talking about the science vessel. Yeah. Not the Enterprise. Tchaikovsky. Yeah. They, yeah, they somehow blew out. I, I, mean, I was thinking like, you know, the Alaska Airlines where the, the, the door panel came <laughs> off. Maybe they just took out some of the bolts oh, maybe. and uh, opened it out into space. Maybe there wasn't supposed to be a thing yeah. there. I mean, it seems to me that you wouldn't want an entry point directly onto the bridge. Seems weird, right? Because somebody's yeah. got to be on the bridge. You'd have to leave the bridge while you connected and stuff. Well, I guess with force fields, but still. Yeah, but I don't know. Think that, did they? I guess they established the force field thing with with the uh, shuttle bay. Mm-hmm. But have we seen that yet? I don't know. So, it's, I mean, in, it's in. Uh, we all haven't good seen Encounter at Farpoint, but I don't think it's an Encounter at Farpoint. Right, and so even if we haven't seen it yet, they established that that's a thing later on anyway. So in universe, it still makes sense that if they did have some kind of egress from the actual bridge maybe there's that might a have been an escape that. pod and that might have been some kind of escape pod maybe yeah if, like the turbo lift sense. is down yeah okay mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> no. i'm sure that yeah. somebody has the specs of the silkovsky tchaikovsky grism i'm sure it's out D. there yeah i think and the only other thing to talk about really is um but the, we, uh, we did talk about underboob right we talked about underboob underboob yeah that yeah, okay, that was okay. the main point of the episode. I, I saw gotcha. it in real life about a year later, which I was I was shocked. I was like, is that legal? Can they do that? Like there was just a lady walking down the street and she had like a half shirt on and a cowboy hat and it was windy. So every time the wind blew, she had to um <laughs> keep her <laughs> cowboy hat on. So I ended up following her the whole like festival I was at. Because every time her, she had to save her hat, <laughs> I, there was a bunch of underboobs. She wasn't wearing a bra, so that, that shows you my Jesus life. Christ. So, underboob. and that's where you got that's where you got your inspiration for the Ariola Aria. Exactly, so, Ariola uh, Aria. Bringing it right back up to the top of the show, which is our other podcast, so, Ariola Aria. Right, that's uh, behind the paywall. <laughs> the Ariola Ariola of Star Trek. I'm sure it's out there. Um, the isolinear chip or the control chips, putting them back in data, that always seemed clunky to me. Like they shot it well because like when Picard is in giving everyone uh, an inoculation or a hypo spray, mm-hmm. like he's blocking data from doing that. So you don't see that there's like a discrepancy between the sped up footage and the normal footage. But they repeat the like, same footage over and over and over and over. Oh, again. I hadn't noticed. Yeah, I, oh. it's, that's one of the curses of seeing these way too many times. Mm. because seems like that do start to show mm. and it, it looked to me like maybe they not only sped it up but played it in reverse because it's probably much easier for him to take those chips out quickly oh, i never thought about him that to put slot them in so i'm now wondering I'm if they that. if yeah i wonder if there's a couple of tricks going on there hmm. interesting so interesting and it, it's um what did you think about their solution about just like uh pushing this Tchaikovsky towards the, 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 what was that? Like a meteor coming towards them? Cause couldn't it they was, have just it was like, like a star, a stellar remnant remnant or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like a star exploded. Right. But then the, a boulder was coming towards them. That didn't yeah. quite make sense to me. <laughs> yeah. It I should mean, be like a shockwave in all directions. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was bad science. Star yeah. They could have just like popped open. A, thought. <laughs> They could have just popped open like a shuttle bay and decompressed the shuttle bay to move yeah, a little bit yeah, out of the way some, or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure that there's plenty of ways to propel a Star Trek. They don't have thrusters. You know, they have, they must have some kind of docking thrusters. Yeah. But those are off. Those are somehow offline. They're like, they or look even like a, pneumatic. Like or they could have taken a perfect. shuttlecraft out of the ship, used a tractor right. beam on the Enterprise just to nudge it enough. Or use a tractor just, beam on the thing coming towards them to move it over or just set a shuttle to ram into the, uh, into the boulder that's coming 
or and maybe knock or that off course a little bit. Get Ben Affleck and Bruce Willis to blow it up. Right? Yeah. I Steve mean, Buscemi. There's were, a lot of things you could do. They were busy. They were busy. <laughs> they were being, drunk and <laughs> horny. <laughs> the drunk and horny episode. Of Star I mean, Trek. they were again, they're like they're like Riker. They were already getting laid and they're just like, well, why stop? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? That's I've never thought of it like that. That you brought it up this time. This episode was a curse for Riker. This was one of those times like, no, because he's always horny, right? Because he's right. Yeah, yeah. But this is the one time he wasn't horny when everybody else on the ship was horny. This ah, is like I, hell again, for Riker. It's, it's the disease is like bringing out. He's got the Geordie version of the disease, and he's like, mm-hmm. God damn it! So, but he does have one hell of an immune system. It affects him the least. But he he goes around touching it. people, like touching Beverly. So he might have been a little drunk. Oh my God! You brought Diana and you touched her, and then you touched me, and right, then this weird but, sound played. Well, that's the same sound from the original series when Joe yeah. is doing this yeah. before he stabs yeah. himself in the mess hall. When they're wearing the shower curtain spacesuits, I love that part. Yeah, <laughs> like like he wouldn't think to go, you know, hey, this is bad. I, I should be in quarantine. Oh well. Again, I said this earlier. The ship has absolutely zero quarantine protocols. You think that <laughs> the chief medical officer would have said? All non-essential personnel get to your bunk. Mm-hmm. You're going to be masturbating anyway. Do it there where we can't see you. <laughs> everyone, Natasha's cor- uh, cor- quarters. <laughs> Every, everyone, line up. Oh, this, that's this dark. episode also explains Data's friendship with Picard. Because if Picard didn't send Data to Tasha's quarters at that exact moment, Data's life would be different. So he owes yep. him one. If so oh, he pays so, him back so, in Nemesis, but it's worth Picard it. Picard is unwitting, unwitting wingman. Yep, I guess Picard's a good wingman. Gotcha. So All I right. think I think we've uh, talked a lot about the naked now. So I think it might be time to do our final thoughts and our out of five rating. Christopher, final thoughts and out of five rating. Um, the wrong episode at the wrong time. Some of the worst acting I've ever seen on Star Trek, bar none. And I would give this one a two out of five, oh. mainly because there are some fun moments and it does give us a little bit more character, but just misplaced. So two, I'll give it, I will give it two frustrated Rikers out of five. Wow. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to go in opposite directions on this one. I'm actually going to give this one a five. Wow. Not, not, like, not the best episode of Next Gen by far. I'm sure those might get a seven. You never know. I mean, five me. is a high bar. You sure you don't want to reconsider that? You're uh, saying no, that I'm, this is on par with, uh, like, best of both worlds. No, best of both worlds. That'll be like an eight or a nine, probably. But, but this it's is at a five. five. Scale. But, yeah, there's one ten. There, there, there's two episodes that'll be a ten, but it's a five scale. But I'm gushing. See, that's how I do it. But I'd say Got it's you. a solid five. For the second episode of a series to have that much... Um, character development and storyline like that takes place over the whole lifespan of next gen uh, to be in this episode and also the fun and the underboob. I but listen, you can get it. Well, I, mm, all right. I can see that's formative underboob for you. Right. So I can, I'll, I'll my give first, you that. My first. Underboob. So, but what it's five, what five, what? Oh, what I will give thing? it five. Uh, <laughs> Underboobs. Okay. Can I can I change mine from frustrated Riker? Sure. I give it uh, I give it uh, two data boners. Oh, there you go. Okay. Gene Roddenberry got his wish. Somebody had sex with a robot, so he was ahead of his time, uh, as always. So I I think that was good. I think that was good. What's next on our show sheet? I don't know. You're the the producer. Um, We don't have in front of me yet. Still moving in. Uh, Who's who's your episode crush? I think we uh, all know. In this one, <laughs> you're gonna it, you're gonna be shocked. Who? Well, well, Who? <laughs> well, for a while, I was considering Chief Engineer McDougal because for some reason she's got something about her, right? Mm. But eh, she seemed more frustrated and angry, and I'm like, I've had too much of that in my life, so I'm gonna go with hot and horny. <laughs> I'm gonna go with hot and horny, and I'm gonna go with Tasha Yar as my crush of this episode. What about you? 
Oh, um, 100% crusher, crusher, crusher. And mm. uh, not the one that wants dessert. <laughs> I think, uh, honestly, uh, this is maybe the sexiest that Gates has ever been on the show. And mm. for an episode that was supposed to portray people as sexual beings, she knocked it out of the park. So 100%. Uh, I guess that's me saying I don't just care about her because of her sexual you know, attributes, but they don't hurt. So, no, not at all. um, she's uh, a very yeah, good actor. So this is, yeah. So here's the show sheet that Albie wrote episode crush. So we have that favorite part of the episode. I think we've established that it's under boob. Under boob. Um, uh, my favorite part of the episode is that front zip, uh, action, action tunic. It's so, really hot. Yeah. Um, and you don't see anything, but it's still hot, right? Was no, it is. It's totally hot. You know why? Mm. Because Beverly is so buttoned down mm. from here on out. I mean, this is uh, besides do not light that candle. Um, do not light I that think candle. This is, yeah, <laughs> this that's, that's is my line. How do you maybe, know my line from from Sub Rosa? I'm sure we'll disagree on that yeah. episode. <laughs> I'm sure we will. But uh, I think this is as overtly sexual as we've seen Beverly, and mm. I think that Gates played played some of those things well. Like I said, that smoldering tension that that sort of undertone that was ruined by a lot of the bullshit um the 47 where's the 47 it, uh, not in this episode so i don't okay. think they started that yet so it's coming though um i think this is where my lifelong crush on crusher developed like i still okay. have a crush on gates mcfadden i mean she's what 79 now i don't even know but man she still does it for me she's just gorgeous She's awesome. I have a story about when I met her. Save it for another time. Save, I don't want to no, give all my stories Sub away. Rosa. Yeah, Sub, Sub Rosa. Oh, I'll tell you during Sub Rosa. Mm. There oh, you I'm go. Remember. So we got a ways to go. We got a, a ways, ways to, go. to go. But uh, yeah. but yeah, I've had a lifelong crush on Beverly. So even though she's my main crush on Next Gen, I have to give it to Tasha Yar in this one because this is the only episode where I do have a crush on her. So Okay. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So after Beverly's the 47. Got, she's got all the rest. Yep. And now I have to give you some trivia. So, Ooh, trivia. Um, did you get your trivia set? I sent I it did. to you in the mail. And you were, you were concerned that it was used, but this, this puppy is wrapped. So I'm going to do the unwrapping okay. right here. Yeah, that was from Amazon. So I wasn't sure because it no, said but, very so good, but you, it didn't Alvin. say new. So I was hoping it was new. No. It was the one I could get there before our next recording date. And I tell you what, I mean, if it's not new, it looks like new. I mean, okay. it's pretty pristine. I don't know why it's this very good. It, it looks you, like it's never been opened. Mm -hmm. And cool. I don't know. So we ruined all. another collectible. That's two for two. Hey, uh, I just dropped my little ship on the floor and broke it. So you broke your little ship. You can ship. tell the collectibles. Yeah, exactly. So the, my hand link has only got, uh, you know. Yeah, don't break your hand link. That was a lot. Morgan made that. Yeah, did, did you yeah. did you have any of these? Did you pay twenty nine dollars uh, every few weeks to get I... two episodes? No, no. My original idea for the no. my original idea for the show was called the Collector's Edition, but Chris had never heard of it, so we made up a word. Yeah, I don't know Collector's Edition for you're getting in the weeds of like different editions. That I will get you a Blu Ray player show, yet because you, you need would to watch the bonus features. You would the boner features. Ha <laughs> ha. See what I did. It's on this naked episode. Now. On this uh, episode, fully functional. I'm trying to open this this freaking program box and it's in got, a plethora it's of got, like, multiple you know, those, techniques. Those really thick tape tape circles that are on the edge, and I gotta mm -hmm. peel it and I need a scissor. That's what I, I that's what I went through last time. Use your broken defiant. <laughs> that's your new letter <laughs> <No>. opener. <laughs> you you broke your little ships. I got a pen here. Cool. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Didn't did I not say that in New York every time we crossed the intersection? There we go. Pen's doing the job. Trust me. Okay, pen. so ask me three or more questions from the same card well, that gotta, I'm not I looking still at. Still got to get this freaking thing open. This this okay. going to be another forty minutes. This podcast. That's fine. That's there part of the go. process. Just, and this is what people totally pay to see. What I did last time, if you remember, is I covered the answers. So, like, yes. when I flipped it over, I didn't know the answers. That gives you a chance to answer it if I don't know it. How's that sound, Christopher? Sounds good. Christopher, favorite uh, pocketbook? Next Gen. Oh, geez. Um, next Gen. Probably. Oh, I don't know Next Gen. 
while you're you open. Want oh, you don't read books. the next gens? No. You have no, a new, whole new world um, to explore. Yeah, I tried the DS9 ones. I tried the, the relaunch series. Um, I petered out on those. I found them of varying quality, and I liked some. I didn't like others, and they had continuing characters like DS9 did and a continuing storyline. But I found one of the characters to just be such a freaking drag, and mm -hmm. they kept on focusing on him. He was an Andorian, and uh, he was just like the mopiest motherfucker on the planet, on any planet. Um, I'm sorry, I cursed again. It's all right. I finally got this thing open. <laughs> yeah. um, um, uh, but you like the original series, right? Yeah. So if you were going to ask me, you know, my favorite books by uh, original series were um, by Diane Duane and Diane Carey. And mm -hmm. uh, Diane Duane wrote one called The Wounded Sky, which I absolutely love. Oh, I haven't and, read that one. Um, Diane, Diane Carey wrote one. Uh, she wrote a series. They were called, I think, Dreadnought and Battle Stations were two of my very favorite ones as well. Um, but those Diane, the Diane's whenever I saw okay. a new book by either Diane Duane or Diane Carey, I was so excited because oh. they were always my favorite, like my go-tos. The most recent one I really loved favorite? was called no time like the past original series, but seven of nine goes back to the original series. Oh, I think I've seen the cover for that. Yeah. I think I found the cards. Woo! So in this thing is, um, like dice and yeah we'll have to play one night it looks like a dvd is here part of her and more and uh yeah and there's even another like reason for you to get a blu-ray player chris yeah there's a board too so yeah it's it folds cool. out it's yeah really neato. Neato. i've never neato played neato. this but i've played Ooh. regular movies seen it and more little ships oh it's got a ship in there it's got is it's it a klingon a uh klingon ship it's got uh it looks like the defiance the enterprise the voyager I don't know what that looks like. The Enterprise C, maybe. Ah. And um, yeah, we'll save it for the. Uh, cool. We'll save, save it, it for, for the show. For the end more. Yeah. For the end more. Okay, so got my scenic cards. Got to right. open those up too. And they're sealed. Yeah, they're sealed. Okay, so this was brand new. Awesome. I love when that yeah, happens. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know why they would say that it wasn't. So Maybe if they sell it as very good, then they can't, if, if, you know, they're not paying attention, everything goes through Amazon resellers or whatever they're. Again, just got to find a way to open this. Sorry. And again. thank you patrons for being part of this process. Cause that's in part what part paid for that uh, scenic game. So thank you so much. No, oh, there we go. We already scenic have the patrons to give me nonsense like yes. this. So nonsense thank you. Lieutenant commanders. Open. Yes. Lieutenant Commander's cosplay dad, fantasy fan, and all one of all. One of all. Mm -hmm. One of us. One of us. One of us. Gobble, one well, of they us. are one of us. They are one of us. A They're loving part of cup. Our crew now. Yeah. A loving cup. My plastic mm -hmm. in my teeth. Okay. Wow. Gotcha. Trek and tell. Uh, not trek, trek and tell. tell. Okay. You have a trek and tell. So we... You ready for a trek and tell? Well, here. No, no. I got to give you your. Okay. We got to give my you your. I got, I got it. You okay, ready? cool, cool. Yeah. So what do we do? Just one or three? Uh, we'll do three. And if I can't get it, then you got the uh, you got the option to steal. Okay. I'm going to read we'll call it the third choir. one on this first one. Well, go, Which actor okay. who played a captain of a starship appeared as the titular character in a sequel to the Columbo series on TV? Uh, captain Janeway uh, played by um, Kate Mulgrew, and it was Mrs. Columbo. Hmm. So hide He's the other answer. He's talking about his wife. He's oh, wait, say it again? About his wife. Yeah, no, that's you said which actor who played a captain of a starship appeared okay. as a titular yep. character. That's my answer, but don't look at the other so answer on the show, on the card. Well, I can also just get another. Uh, yeah, you could, but we got a lot, a lot of shows to go through, 900 of these. Kate Mulgrew is Mrs. Columbo. Woo! You're one for one, sir. All right. She was um, sexy back then. In the motion picture. Yes. In the motion picture first contact, who is Lily Sloan? Lily Sloan is Zephyrin Cochran's assistant, right? Lily? I have her action figure. Who was your, she? You, you broke your little ships. You broke your <laughs> little ships. Lily Sloan? Mm -hmm. Moby Dick. Actually, I never read it. Yeah, I have her action yeah. figure. 
So yeah, actually they're looking for, I mean, we, so we both know who Lily was. I looked at the answer. They are looking for an actual um, occupation. Engineer, research engineer, radiation specialist. I don't know. The engineer would do an aerospace engineer. Aerospace engineer. Okay. I think we got it. And for the third trivia question. Why does Guinan urge Captain Picard to join the away team he's about to send to Davidia in the Next Generation episode, Time's Arrow Part 1? Because that's she knows that that's when Picard and Guinan first meet in Guinan's timeline. And if he doesn't go, <laughs> he won't get zapped into the past and they'll never meet. There you go. All if right. he doesn't go, she will never meet him. Yeah, A thing that they conveniently forgot about in the second season of Picard because it was such a pile of garbage. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know how they retcon that. They don't, we'll to, they just we'll forget have, about it. We'll have to analyze that as we, as we, as we get there. I guess so. All right. As, do you have you a Trek do. and tell this time? Cause I answer trivia questions. I do. I, do. I have a Trek and tell. Um, all right. It's one of the few things that I have that I can Trek and tell about. So, well, it could be a book too and all kinds of stuff. I don't know it if I, I might've showed this on other Trek and tells, but this is something that I love to wear proudly all around the neighborhood when I haven't taken a shower. And I've been waiting for someone to come up to me and talk to me about enterprise and no one ever has which so is I got weird my nx01 right? my nx01 ball cap um what i hate about it now is mm-hmm. um when i have my hair as long like this it makes mm-hmm. me look so gray like all you see is gray i look like the oldest man look at that look how gray just for men you seven bucks gray yeah so my mom said today, she's like, why don't you dye your hair? And I said, shut up. I'm not dying my hair. Yeah. But, uh, it's, so it's, yeah, that's it's... my truck and tell. I got this online and I was so happy when I found it. Number one, because I it's loved nice. like the ball cap look and, you know, I love the, the enterprise uniforms. And I was so happy because I have not a hat head. And anytime I put on a ball cap in my entire life, I look like a reject. Same. Uh, they're always they're always too big on me. They're always weird looking on me. But this one is smaller, and it actually fits my head. And I think I look okay in it. Yeah, which for great. me with a ball cap is just unheard of. So this is my trek and tell. Aside from my broken defiant, it's my NX01. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to wear it when we talk about so. Enterprise. Yeah. Do we have time to get Enterprise uniforms before uh, Enterprise starts? I don't know. I was thinking about it. Once I got my Marty McFly cosplay done, I said, maybe I can cobble together uh, an Enterprise uniform. The Marty Uh, McFly one was easy to do. So They're on eBay. But yeah, I want to make it myself, but I don't know how to make Mm. it myself. You would need a serger. Uh, Oh, sure. That sounds like I would need to get infected by the naked now disease (laughs) to get a serger. An overlocking sewing machine. I have one. (laughs) So, uh, my so, my first uh, venture into uh, sewing was for Star Trek costu- uh, uh, uniforms. I almost said costumes. Excuse me. So you're like um, James Crawley when he was doing uh, New Voyages. Uh, he, if, he... if yep, <laughs> there we go. if my life had gone the way I had hoped it would gone w- was going to go when I was twelve, it would be James Crawley. So, okay. So what's your truck and tell, James Crawley? Oh. We, uh, should we just alternate? Well, we got 900, oh, sure. right? I got more than 900 things. I can do this one because it's, it's just we can alternate be because I'm not, I have, I have about four things, so I'm going to run out of stuff soon. <laughs> kidding me. Number like, one. Why do you have that? <laughs> number one. Have you got number two? Number one. This is for Captain Picard uh, day. Okay. I got it at Target about a month ago. Not so bad. Okay. They're still cool. making next-gen merch in Target. I am baffled by the fact that they do, but then you take it off the shelves, so they just put more there. So maybe yep. it's not as baffling. Maybe it's baffling only to me. Yep. We, we'll have to watch his evolution over the years. <laughs> See what Sounds happens like to plan. him. All right. What's next on the show sheet? That's it. Goodbye. That's it. We've been going like two, two hours now. Oh, okay. We got to talk. Are you sure? Or are you just saying goodbye? <laughs> We got to talk more no, about patrons and how people can join the Patreon and all that oh, stuff. Okay, because this is next gen, so this is on this is on our free. Well, we have everybody. Feed, you have it. you have feedback on there, but we already read that up top. So okay, that, this is, is that what all you guys feedback? need to do. I think that's all the feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, so we you, thank our patrons and we tell people how they yeah. can become lieutenant commanders or cadets. So thank you. Thank you, patrons. If you would like to be like uh, Cosplay Dead and All of One and or All for One, I think I'm saying it wrong. All I got to go look now. Oh, yeah. I'm on the yeah. wrong one again. Yeah. So. Where did you put I, it? I think it's I had about top. five trekking pills in this one. All right. You know what? I am going to have to redo this show sheet. It's an ungodly mess. So, yeah. Yes, please. If you would like to be like Lieutenant Commander, like one of all, and fantasy fan and cosplay dad, you can do so at patreon.com slash trexploration. You'll find the link down below in the link section here on YouTube, you know, down there. You can also follow us on Instagram at instagram.com slash trexplorationpod. And you can also X us or Twitter us at twitter.com slash trexploration. Uh, you can email us at trexplorationpod at gmail.com. I, I want to I wanna strangle you, Albie. Sometimes <laughs> it's trexploration. Sometimes it's trexploration pod. Why didn't you just pick a name? Pick I a bought lane. the URL and somebody has trexploration at gmail.com. Those How? Sons of Why? I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't me. So I was like. It was like already taken. I was like, you're kidding. There's no way it was already taken. All right. So if you listen, if you, if you try to email Trek exploration, some other dude or gal is going to get it. So you want to go to Trek exploration pod at gmail.com for emails. And, uh, you know, um, now that you gave that out, Chris, you got to check the email. I did. That's what, okay. that's where the, that's where the feedback oh, from the beginning of the show came from. So That's true. Thank you, Lieutenant Commanders. We really appreciate yes, that. Thank you all, Lieutenant Commanders, for all of your support. And it's surreal to me that this is episode two and we already have three Lieutenant Commanders. You guys yeah, it's are crazy. Really stepping up. I'm so excited and we're not just speaking into the ether and people are actually listening. Uh, thank you for everybody who watched the first episode. I think we're over 300, 350 now between the two channels, yeah. which is really yeah. great. So. Yeah, we'll find our footing. I'm going yeah. to streamline the sheet and we'll do a little bit more of an order. All right. to the conversation at yeah. the top and the bottom of the show. So um, we're getting there, everybody. We're getting yep. there. What's next? But, uh, so next time is Code of Honor. I Code think of Honor. The most widely lambasted episode of Star Trek ever made. So there will be... Shall I read? Wait. No vaccine and no Lieutenant Yah. <laughs> you say that just like, I've taken down bigger men than you, Picard. They're similar, just different costumes. <laughs> Gotcha. Uh, do I need to read the little the little blurb yeah. that you wrote so, here? So everybody's yeah. on the same page and watching the next one, but before they watch us talk about it. The Enterprise travels to Lingen 2 to negotiate a treaty to obtain a vaccine needed on Styrus 4. The Lingonians feign friendliness but kidnap Lieutenant Tasha Yor, and the crew must combine their wits to turn the tables on the Lingonians. That's next time. Next mission. So is that where Lingonberries come from in Voyager? Not sure. We'll or is that, a, is that a the Gamma Quadrant thing from, uh, from Delta DS9? Quadrant? DS9, Delta, Delta Quadrant, Gamma, thing. Beta. What happens in the Beta Quadrant? I'm not sure. No, they go to the, they go, don't they, we're just in the Delta Quadrant and the Gamma Quadrant's where the wormhole goes in DS9. So. Right, right, right. So the Beta Quadrant, I think like, you know, kind of Romulans live there, don't they? Yeah. And that kind of a Romulan thing. I'm sure we'll get so. there in our watch alongs and stuff. So yeah, you know what's, what's, oh yeah, I have so many questions about like some of the stuff that they laid down on Enterprise too. So we got a, we got a ways to go. <laughs> uh, is there anything else? Are we going to say goodbye? Is that it? No, goodbye? That's it. Is that next it's on the sheet? It's a, it's, it says bye-bye on the sheet. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, so for, for Trek Exploration, I'm Albie. And I'm Chris. And we'll see you next time. Keep trekking. <laughs>